Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dan Bell Saturday. It is Saturday again, and uh, did I do this last week? I think I've been doing some earlier because I haven't, my schedule's been very, um, uh, my schedule has been very normal, meaning I'm not staying up all night, but I slept in today, so we're good. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well tonight. We have a fun adventure to, to go on tonight. So, hey, Tina Stamball, DJ Eurosham, Young Widow, hello. Um, Jeremy's Retail, hello, how are you? Um, and I want to say thanks to, uh, shit, their comments pinned. I can't remember their name, but I, because I can't see it. But anyway, they came on earlier and gave me ten dollars, so I thanked them for that. Just, now I'm just we're going we're going to be here for in my apartment for just a little bit. So hold on one second. I wanted to do this beforehand. Um, I wanted to do this before I. Uh, got on, but I'm just putting a glove on. You'll see why in a minute. Um, so anyway, this is my office. Let me show you real quick. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's a mess, but it's an organized mess. Printing area, scanning, editing, Addresses, letters, the computer, of course, voiceover, podcast, my big Kmart sign that I scored off eBay, and uh, that's where Wee Wee sleeps or lays while I'm working, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so let's. Let me just show you guys what I wanted to show you. Now, um, for those of you who have already purchased a print, I appreciate it. But today marks a new day. I've been experimenting with bigger size prints, so 11 by 14. Um, and I really like them. And we're going to go even bigger, but it's going to take a little bit because um, I'm just growing this as we go along sort of creating it as we go along. But I just want to show you um, some of the new 11 by 14 prints. There's six of them. They're fabulous, I must say. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm tooting my own horn because I took the photo and did all the editing and stuff. But let me show you these um, pictures, prints, excuse me. If I can get this to turn around. Okay. All right. So now these are going to be cut down a little bit more. Um, they're going to be cut down a little bit more, but the image size itself is 11 by 14. So this is the first one. This is Kmart. And it is. Uh, very, um, it's on the best paper, the best ink um, you can buy, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I love this because of the cracked um, Kmart sign. So this is an 11 by 14. It's signed down there. Um, and it's going to, the, the border is going to be trimmed a little bit more. Just so you know, next up, I'm going to put this over here because I don't like to. And here, these are the 8 by 10s and I'll show you those in a minute. But look at this one. This one is so good. I love this one. Blockbuster video. This was either in Kentucky or West Virginia. I can't really remember where this was. Um, 
but this is an 11 by 14. It is really good quality, really high quality. Um, you can see it's got a little bit of luster to it. So there's that one. Now these are sort of like American icons, like these, uh, these pictures. You can go on to thisisdanbell.com and the first thing on the page you'll see 11 by 14s and you just click on the 11 by 14. This is called Daily Specials. I took this in West Virginia um, this year. So this is a beautiful print. Um, and if you do purchase these, please don't touch them with your fingers. Put gloves on or some kind of cloth glove or just um, latex. I never touch these without gloves on. Um, so when you get them, you won't have any like fingerprints on or anything. This one is fabulous. This is this motel that we got kind of lost off the turnpike in Jersey and saw this and I couldn't believe it and um, was able to get that. And these, by the way, are $34. So you can't really beat that. Um, eventually, I'm going to offer additions that are going to be you know, priced higher and they'll be framed. But right now, I want everyone to be able to get their own picture. So, I love this one so much. Okay, we'll put that there. Here we have another American icon, Sears, with the empty store in space the empty s store in space what the fuck am i talking about the empty space inside the store <laughs> and these are printed or signed in the corner the borders are going to be cut down a little bit just fyi but these are um very high quality prints they'll last forever you just have to take care of them and don't touch them with your fingers Make sure you wear a glove when you handle. When you receive them, they'll be in a little, um, they'll be in a protective sleeve, so you don't have to worry about anything. And here we are, this is number six. This is a night shot of the meat factory. Vengeful Cowboy, thank you very much. I'm doing well. Um, here is the remains of the meat factory. And uh, it's a beautiful photo. And it is priced at $34. Signed in the lower right. And it can be yours at thisisdanbelt.com. And I'll show you quickly here some of the 8 by 10s These are $25. This is Liminal Mall from 2017. These are signed on the back. This is uh, one of this one's prints. The Schuylkill Mall. Which is now completely gone. This is something from the past. Gone. This I love. This is uh, the Mona Lisa Motel. Um, I took this when I was shooting Creeps and Monsters. So these are... This is the one that has sold more than any other photo on the website. The Motel sign. It's kind of weird if you hold it up. It looks like it's glowing. Look at that. But... Motel.
Neil, thank you so much. Neil, what did Neil ask? The Bog Pedo story tonight? What is that? Oh, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can tell that story. That's a creepy fucking story, but I'll tell it. Um, I, this is probably, out of all the photographs I've ever taken, this is my favorite. I fucking love this picture so much. This was taken in 2016, and it looks like a photo from 1971. But I love this photo. And this is also, this is gone. This was uh, demauled. This is fabulous. Vacancy, one of my favorites too. It's beautiful. Hey Nick, thank you so much. Doing very well, thank you. And this is the a truck trailer that is a it is an abandoned truck trailer, and I found and they had all these '90s era Pepsi cans on the side, and you can see it's all cracked and faded, and um, I just thought it was so beautiful. So yeah. Uh, let's see, someone, Pringles, can I show the chairs that I got? Was so invested in that stream and never saw the famous chairs. There's one right over there, Pringles. But yes, look, look who it is, it's Mama. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on camera. Mama. Aww. <laughs> Mama, did you decide no? Aw, come here, Mama. Come here. Oh, she is not in the mood. What's wrong with you? Come here. See, she's, because I'm talking and on the phone, she is weirded out. She gets weirded out when I'm on the phone. All right, Mama. Uh, here's a chair. Pretty chair. I can't sit in it, but it's pretty. <laughs> I'm too fat to sit in the chair. Oh, Sophie's over there. The next thing, um, the next thing I'm getting is uh, a uh, table, a kitchen table, so I can actually like sit and. Oh God! And I need paper towels too. Yes, we are going out tonight. We're not sitting here. No sorry, Bob. I want to get out of here. So, here's that. You be good. I'll be home in a couple. Oh, I did forget to flip the camera. Excuse me. Oh, uh, let's see. Thank you, Jacqueline, on Patreon. She said the prints are stunning. They are. They're beautiful. I can't... I'm, I'm telling you guys, I've been, like, working my ass off to get them to look the way that they do. And, um... I've gone through so much paper. I can't even tell you how much hundreds of dollars of paper have been thrown away. Just so I can get them just to look the way they look. But um, yeah, oh, I also have one of these right, right belt chairs in here too. Anyway, let's get out of here. I hope that the wedding party downstairs is not, hold on.
Hey, how you doing? Okay. Oh, let's see. I just made my coffee before I started because I didn't want to. The, those neighbors just moved in. They seem pretty nice. I'm looking forward to... Uh, Catherine Frampton. It's her first Super Chat, everybody. And I can't even see it. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't show you guys Krusty. He's on the floor next to his... Uh, they, they have that... Um, um, water... Uh, it's like a... It filters the water through, a, it goes through a filter, but it has like a little fountain feature. He's obsessed. He will sit there all day and watch that fountain. And uh, he just loves it. <laughs> and he's getting this little spot on his forehead because he sticks his head under it to drink in the fountain. Um, you know, makes his hair messed up. Hey, Mark. So. Someone's really blowing their nose in here. Let me read this comment before it disappears. Catherine Frampton, you did write something, dear. Dan, can you show me the chairs you got? Oh, Catherine, I'm sorry, that was an earlier comment. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's very strange. No. Okay. We're already getting off to a wonky YouTube start tonight. I hope this thing operates. Look, I have a cold sore. So tonight I wanna go, oh my God, these fucking things are everywhere. Look at this. See that? That is a spotted lantern fly. They're literally everywhere. <laughs> They're like um, twice. I took Mama out twice today, and uh, she'll get her evening walk here in a, when I get back. But um, both times, the lantern flies landed on my shirt. <laughs> They're just flying around everywhere. Okay. Whoops. All right, let's get this set up here. Oh, come on, babes. Oh, it's over there. Hold on, I'm going to get it. Come on. I want this thing to fall. There we go. 
That should be good. Okay, we're in the truck. Um, I want to go down and see where the Preston houses are or were, I should say. Please don't. I'm like having like a, not an anxiety attack, but like, I was anxious to show those photos. So I was like kind of freaking out when I was showing them. So I think I'm better now, but the photos, this is danbell.com. You can go there and get yours today. And there's some specials going on and, uh, I just sent out um, the rest of the orders from August. So if you order something in August, it's on its way now. Um, There's just a lot of catching up to do. I had to buy one of those machines that like prints out the thermal printer that prints out the addresses because uh, I couldn't write. I mean, I was just was not expecting. Such, oh, it, it's nice out. The heat is gone. Oh, this is so nice. I guess the rain that went through did it. Um, let me see here. Hey, Casey. Uh, I love you too. Oh, you love my content. I love you too. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Sorry about that, boys. Yeah, I don't know why, like, I get nervous before a live stream, but, like, sometimes, sometimes I don't, and then sometimes I really do, and tonight I started to get nervous, and, um, because I had to plug my, I hate plugging web, my website, I love the website, it's like a full-time job, so is Patreon, um, but... It's just a lot of fun, but I didn't get to do a video this week. I could not, I didn't have the time. I tried. Coffee. Damn, this thing does not want to stick. On that thing, here we go. Okay. Oh my God, it is so nice out. It is like perfect outside right now. So those little, if you're in the, in the region here where the lantern flies are, then you know what I'm talking about. They're everywhere. They're like everywhere. And you have to be a good citizen and kill them. So every time I see one, I step on it and kill it because they're invasive and we're not going to have any fruits and vegetables left with these damn things flying around. I'm just used to like fucking being hot. It has been so... If, you're, if you've been in Maryland, I mean, it's been so hot this week. It's like miserable. I talked to my friend in Milwaukee earlier today and he was like, oh my gosh, it's like fall here. And I'm like, when is it going to get here? It's been really, really hot. Like, Mama goes out and her tongue is like nine inches long, hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> and she does this thing. It is so funny. But she knows a short route. So she always cuts down the alleyway so we can go right to the back door of the Belvedere. Because she doesn't feel like walking anymore because she's hot. I've never seen a dog who doesn't want to go for a walk. But she'll like this tonight. I'll take her out in this. She'll enjoy this. The last couple of weeks, like... Um, can you all hear me okay? Can everyone hear me? I hope you can all hear me okay. Okay, everyone. Okay, good, 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 good. That's good, babes. That's good. Um... The last couple of weeks, um, I didn't, 
Well, no, last Saturday I definitely did an early live stream. But I think I stayed on really late. I can't remember. And then the week before that, I think I did another one in the app. Like, I started around, like, five or something. Because I knew I wouldn't be awake. I would fall asleep. But... That's my own damn fault. Um, I have been, like, not... Like, I've just been working so much, and I haven't, like, gone to... Sprouts, which I'm supposed to be doing, <laughs> and going for the easy shit, which is just gross, unhealthy food, of course, because look at me, what else am I going to be eating? Salad, which I was eating salad before, um, so when I go to Sprouts and eat the food from Sprouts, when I have conscien conscious shopping, where I'm like, okay, this is good for you, this is good for you, um, my energy is through the roof. I'm like, oh, I feel good. I'm walking. I feel great. Um, as soon as I start eating shit, acid reflux, can't sleep, waking up, going back to sleep, waking up again, feeling tired, no energy. I mean, it's just got to stick to that sprout side. So I'm going back to sprouts to get some goddamn food. I need food. Um, so what's new on, uh, Patreon right now? And then this is the last I'm plugging. I'm not plugging anymore because it's already been a half an hour and I did a, like, 15-minute commercial for my website. But I'm just really excited. And the thing, oh, and listen, if you've ordered prints, please leave a review on the website if you can. I don't know how it, ha I don't know how it works, but if you can leave a review, that would be great. Also, if you buy prints and you don't like them, let's say you hate the prints, they're horrible, you don't like them, all you gotta do is contact, send me a message, I will refund. Not only can you keep the photos, I'll refund your money and the shipping costs, so it costs you absolutely nothing, you don't have to do anything, you can burn the photos, you can spit on them, you can urinate on them. <laughs> okay, dude. Learn how to drive in the city. Um, anything you prefer, you can shred them. Do that, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have gotten them, it would be great. And please, 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 when you get your prints, there's an envelope, okay? Open the envelope first. Don't open the... The, the cellophane bag that the print is in, do not open that until you open the envelope. Because there's instructions inside on how to handle your print. So, I want you to read those before people pull the print out and they're looking at it. And I'm like, oh my god. I've already had a couple people say, oh, I got a fingerprint on it. If you smudge it, get a fingerprint, something gets fucked up while you're framing it, just contact me. I will send you another print free of charge. You don't even have to pay shipping. That's another thing. So... It's a very, very uh, easy shop to shop at. This is danbell.com. And I run the fuck, the whole show is mine. I run the website. I built the, well, Dylan built the website. And now I've learned how to use the whole thing. So it's like, I've, it's just so much fun. I really, really enjoy it. Um... But it's just, you know, orders come in and then I'm like, I have to spend, you know, like, sometimes the first part, of, the first part of August, I was packing orders at a slow rate because I couldn't. I couldn't cut and paste the name and address onto a onto an Avery uh, sticker thing. It just wasn't working. And then you have to go to the post office with like I had bags and bags and bags of envelopes, orders, 
And the poor lady at the post office was like, oh no. She was the only teller. And people started coming in and I'm like so uncomfortable. So they had to bring another teller in because she had, it took her an hour and a half or almost two hours to, for us to go through all the envelopes. Oh, she's got a cute painting while she's riding her bike with a painting on the front. I love that. It's like so Parisian. Um, but anyway, so now I buy the postage store. I, this, I don't know why I'm talking about this, you people. Everyone must be like, what is wrong with him? <laughs> I'm just having fun with it. But anyway, I, I, like I buy the, the postage right off the website and then I just, it just print, I print out a sticker on the little machine I bought, stick it to the envelope, it has my address, their address, and then we're done. It's like so brilliant. And I don't even have to wait at the post office. I just toss everything in a in the um, bin at the post office. Except international. All the international orders have been sent. So if you're watching me in England or Australia or Italy or New Zealand or Belgium, Sweden, Japan. We have two orders in Japan. And I think that's it. Oh, in Germany, Germany as well. Germany. So, I just thought that was really cool, but it was like a stack of orders, like this big, international uh, orders, which I'm fine with. Uh, you know, it's just weird to have your pictures, like, sell to people all over the world. Um... We're gonna go over here real quick. I just wanna see, they've been tearing this down for a while. Now, you guys remember the video on, the, on this channel of me going to that old, rottenest, stinking school over here, which I'm almost positive, like, <laughs> scrappers had to have seen that video and gone in this place and taken the kitchen appliances that here. Yeah. This school. Sounds like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Anyway, uh, let's show you guys this real quick. So this is the school that I went into on the channel. Um, someone, had t they locked it up. I don't know who the hell put that on there. Cause it doesn't make any damn difference cause all the doors are open. This in here was the kitchen. So it was right in here where the kitchen was. But people were saying that mixer in there and the, um, and the other shit, um, uh, was worth a lot of money. I cannot get over how enormous this school is. I mean, it literally the hallways, it was like, I've just, I've never seen like, I've never seen so many um, long, creepy looking hallways. Let's see here if we can turn. I don't know, the this school apparently closed down in 2013 and then they used parts of the building to um, have different sort of educational um, organizations. Uh, a lot of the stairwells had walls built in front of them and stuff, so they were trying to um, minimize the space. 
but it uh, didn't really seem to make any difference. People are asking about these purple lights in Baltimore. You know, here's the front of this. Look how big this place is. It just goes on and on and on and on. It doesn't stop. It's a whole city block. Am I? Okay. Oh my gosh. For a minute, I got freaked out because I thought I was on a one-way street. Look, all I smell is lumber. Oh, uh, look at the little black kitty cat. Look. Where is he? There he is. Anyway, um, why would you do that? Um, this is where the Perkins homes were. They are all gone. The whole thing is gone. And the only thing left is the school, which let's just drive in here real quick. Because the thing is, with this fucking place, is that, uh, here we are. Oh my God, it's so creepy back here. What is all that shit there? Oh, you know what? Maybe that's just people dumping shit. Dump. Yeah, that's all dumped. Dump stuff. But, um... These doors right here, um... They're open. At least the last time I was here, they were open. These, these rooms up here are all being used by drug addicts. Delectable medley, you're out of your fucking skull. I'm not going in this fucking place by myself. No way. Those days are... Um, I mean, I'd still do it, but this building is not a place to do something like that. Oh, shit. Look, so they came and secured those doors. And then someone is now getting up in there with a ladder. But those doors are secured. They're welded shut. Unbelievable. That's crazy. That would be a fun shot of me climbing up that ladder... I could be like a test, um, oh great, what did I just run over? Like a fucking bottle or something. I can be like a test, um, to test the load bearing of the, of the ladder. They can put like my face on the box and be like, it held Dan Bell and it can hold you too. Are you fat? <laughs> Are you a fat slob? You will love this ladder. Apocalypse Jen. Hello, darling. It is a glorious evening in Baltimore. So, this building, and I'm going to tell you about, well, I'll show you. Uh, oh my God, right in front of us, man. That is what's inside the school. So, that's why I'm not going in the fucking school. And there's 
him and then there's another there's a guy in a wheelchair and there's another woman strung out on the steps or she's not even on the steps she's just she's just laying on the in the gutter um but that school was nothing but those people tweakers you know crackheads um which is why I don't have I just can't deal with that too many boys. <laughs> you know, I find it it's, we we're so lucky in America. Um like we truly are the most deranged society imaginable if you think about it because like I don't know is YouTube allowing monetization of videos of Kensington like the videos where the people are walking around Kensington and I mean whatever the ad sense is you'd have to give me triple to get me to walk around Kensington and Kensington if you don't know it's in Philadelphia it's the it's it's like drug central in Philly it's where all the all the drug addicts go and um get high and get drugs and do whatever other outrageous outrageous that they do there but if YouTube monetizes those videos these videos are getting millions and millions and millions of views just someone walking around Kensington with a camera I mean it's just unbelievable and half the time I don't even think they're using a visible camera I think they're just using something small that um, is not very noticeable but like, I don't know. Those things just don't interest me at all. Like, I mean, listen, Kensington, um, I have a friend. Why did you do that? I have a friend who, um, when I was, uh, late teens, I had a friend who lived there. And, uh, it was... I mean, back then it was it was shady, but it's it wasn't as bad as it is now. But it, back then it was like a lot of prostitution and pimps and drugs and everything. But it wasn't like you didn't see like people like sprawled out on this like sidewalk like there is now. I mean, it's just like piles of junkies, um, and they're like completely out of it I don't understand I just don't I don't get it but I don't get why people want to watch that stuff I just, maybe did I talk about this before I just don't understand maybe it's because I live in the city and I see it all the time so I'm like kind of desensitized um and, and like people who live in the burbs like they don't see that kind of shit so they watch it and they're like oh my god and they're like, you know, Biden's America and all this shit. Um, like, I don't, like, I, that shit's been going on forever. It's just now people have decided to exploit it for money. That's what I'm saying. God bless America. You know? You film someone, you, you film Kensington, you get a thousand views, there's ten bucks. The same 10 bucks to make it in Kensington if you're a junkie. You have to suck a big, slimy, wart-covered D-I-C-K. Um, and all the other person did was upload a video. They walked around for half an hour. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. I mean, truly. Think about that for a minute. How absolutely insane that is. I don't know what, what are you? Um, yeah, but anyway, it's like that school is like Kensington, but it's indoors. And I don't want to see that again. But when we were there, like, the the thing that gets me, uh, 
whenever if I go somewhere and I see a tweaker, I'm leaving. Tweakers freak me out. Um, they're always paranoid. They're always freaking out. You know, they ask you a million questions. If you try to tell them, hey, go fuck yourself, get away from me, it just makes it worse. So I try to run away from tweakers as much as I can. But that guy, there was a guy in there who was like looking for shit on the, they're always looking for shit on the floor. Like they think they dropped their drugs, so they're like looking on the floor. Um, and that's what was happening with that guy that was in there. And I'm like, no thanks, I'm getting the fuck out of here because I don't want anything to do with tweakers. But that, that going back in that building, I, w- I wouldn't go in there again. Had the opportunity, shot the video, done. No reason to go back. It's not the children's asylum or somewhere cool. It sucks. So, um, I've been, uh, watching, um, YouTube videos lately, and, um, boy, there's just not much going on YouTube that I'm interested in anyway. I mean, I watch, and I'm just like, oh my god. There's a lot of stuff I turn off, because I just can't deal with it, but when do you think it's going to get to a point where people are going to be like, I, I killed myself for three minutes. Do you ever, do you think that video is coming? Where someone, like, is, like, die, they, like, deliberately die and then have someone resuscitate them in the, in the video? Do you think that that's going to happen soon? Like, people are so desperate to get views that they're going to start offing themselves for three minutes and coming back. It is it's such a weird place, man. It really is. But I enjoy my little corner. It's fun. I need to do more uh, podcasts. You know, I did. I. I. Um, this is what I wanted to say. So I did a live stream, two of them on Patreon where I just go off, like, I was, like, complaining about everything, because that day, I wanted a cigarette really bad, like, I was, like, craving a cigarette, and I'm, like, oh, I want a cigarette so bad, I was, like, losing it, and it was, like, this really strong craving, I don't know why it just happened, it just came up, I think just because I've just been working so much, and I'm just, like, used to having cigarettes for, like, stress relief, but, um, I didn't smoke. Instead, I went on to Patreon and did this live stream. Excuse me. Where I just complained for hours. And everyone loved it. It's so bizarre. Why is that? Why is that? Did I have dinner? I did have dinner. And I'm out of garbage bags, too. Maybe we should go to the store so I can get some garbage bags. What time is it? 9.59. Uh, I don't think... Oh, you know what? I'll go to the white trash... It's this, wait a minute, let me think how to get there. New York, 95 New York, Eastern. Okay, that's the way to get there. I don't want to go on Walmart. I just want to go on Amazon and get the trash bags on Amazon. I've decided no longer to enter retail establishments. I can't stand it. 
it's just too, um, this taco truck here is unbelievable. They have the best tacos. Tacos are delicious. Everything's nice and fresh. Um, let me show you where I'm going. There we go. This is Greek town. And let me tell you something, I would literally go insane living here because uh, there's no fucking way. How do you park a truck? There, well, he did it, but I don't know how. You'd have to have a lot of room to park a truck on this street. Um, this was a scene of one of my favorite, um, Baltimore train wreck, um, incidents, but, you know, I've been doing this for years, like, driving around Baltimore at night during the day just to see, sometimes you'll see something real crazy, and here, um, I really lucked out. <laughs> I was with my friend. This was like 20 years ago. And, um, my friend and I were driving on this road right here. We were on this road. And it was one of these houses here on the right. And the sheriff was there. And there was these two girls that looked like they were like strippers. Um, they were loud and crazy and they were, they were being evicted. And, um, the one woman was in a bikini, um, carrying this giant pink teddy bear and screaming at the top of her lungs, fuck the landlord. And she's just going on and on. She's like, I paid that motherfucker his money, and on and on and on, and it was, uh, I know it sounds terrible to say that you enjoy watching, uh, you would have had to have seen the scene, it looked like something out of a, out of a, um, Fellini movie or something, I've never seen anything like it. They were just screaming and, like, cussing and smoking. And then one of their boyfriends got there with a truck. And the, he's telling the guys to put everything in the truck. And, oh, my God, it was some scene, man. But they had, like, real, like, thick Baltimore accents and stuff. So it made it... It made it fun to watch. They're playing jump at the gas station. Jump, jump for my love. I know you want to make me happy. Jump in. Yes, the Pointer Sisters. Matthew Farmer says framing the photos and selling them that way. Um, I am going to do that, but that is for the uh, editions. So I'm going to start doing like editions of 20. Those will be framed. But the reason I don't frame them is to keep the cost down. Um, so everyone can afford it. Framing is going to cost, you know, it's going to tack on another at least if I did it cheaply, it would tack on at least another $50, so I'm trying to keep things under 50 bucks, because then you can get the picture, and then you can go to, you know, Target, or go on Amazon, and get the frame that you like, you don't have to, I mean, some people choose to get them professionally framed, um, you know, it's, 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 it's just, 
depending on what kind of budget you have and how much money you want to spend. Um, are we, wait a minute, this is, what are we doing? This is not a stop, this is not a light. This, we've been sitting here all this time, and I'm like, there's no light. I thought that there was a light here. Probably dozed off on dope. All right, come on. Oh, my Lord. I mean, guys, we sat there for at least three minutes. I'm like, damn, this is a long light. And then I look up and there's no light. Um, UV glass is expensive, um, but if you search enough online, you can find places that sell it and they'll cut it for you. Um, you can even get synthetic glass as well, which makes it cheaper. Synthetic, it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a plastic, but, um, it is expensive. Like, there used to be this place I bought it from, and they would cut it for me. Um, but they don't exist anymore. They went out of business. Alright, let's see what we got here. Um, Rob... Dan. Oh, excuse me. Have they been um, tearing down old apartments, old abandoned stuff in Baltimore? Yeah, like crazy. And thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, no, they've been tearing down shit, like, a lot of shit. Um, and it's because the last governor allotted all this federal money um, for the city to tear down some of these uh, abandoned buildings and get rid of the blight. But the problem is is that uh, the, the um, uh, sorry, I was thinking about something. Should I go this way? Yes, we're fine. Okay. Um, no, when they tear down the when they tear down all these buildings and stuff, they, they leave just an empty space, and it really serves no purpose. I don't even know if it like like does it really? Uh, you know, they said it's like rodent reduction and stuff, but it doesn't. That, I don't believe that at all. I think abandoned houses draw less rodents than houses that uh, are occupied because abandoned houses aren't going to have food and the kinds of things that rats are looking for to survive. Um, so why would a rat live in an abandoned house? That doesn't... There has to be some food source for the rat. So I think more rats would be in the houses where there's people than the houses where there's nobody. going like 30 or 40 feet underwater in the disgusting inner harbor, the harbor of Baltimore, and now we're going back up out of the water. Back to a place where we can breathe. Oh, happy day. Um, let's see, can we get some likes on this video? I hate to ask, but, uh, there's only, like, 400. 
Can we get some likes, please? Everyone like the video. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, I know where we're going to go. I just turn it. It's so good to get out of the house. I haven't done this. Well, yesterday I was like, I pulled an all nighter yesterday because I was just swamped and I needed to get orders done. So I like stayed up. Um, all night. And then the next day in the afternoon, I was really tired. I had just dropped everything off at the post office. And so I went to the park and I just kind of parked the truck, rolled the windows down and fell asleep in the damn truck with the windows down. Um, and I, only, I slept for like 30 minutes or something. And I woke up like in a panic because I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, like, somebody could have, like, robbed me or something. I mean, who knows what the hell could have happened, but, yeah, I dozed off in the truck for 30 minutes. Worth it, though. It kept me, it gave me the energy to last until, like, 8 o'clock last night. Dylan just texted. He was reminiscing about our flea market days. That's another thing. I, mean, I love going to flea markets. I, just have, I haven't been to one in so long. Poteen. I'll just take this exit. I don't know if this is the right exit. I doubt it. If this cannot be the right exit. But... We'll see. That sounds like fun. I'll take that street. Now the other way would be faster, actually, but I don't I don't know where I'm I always get confused as to where I don't want to say where I'm going because So anyway, uh, yeah, so I have a new video coming out next Friday. It was supposed to come out this Friday, but unfortunately something happened 
I got busy. I just couldn't sit down. But next week, I'm going to sit down and really get this video done. It's another creepy. It, it's, it's, um, we go to an old, uh, hospital. It's a bank that was turned into a hospital for homeless people. And, uh, it's been abandoned for probably 10 or 15 years, uh, maybe more. And it's, uh, just horrifying place. Um, I think a lot of the patients decided to come back. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, the typical things you would find, human excrement, and, but they built, like, these weird, like, some of the rooms had people living in them, but there was nobody there when we were there, but, man, it was a creepy place, and the smell, and there's this alley across from the place where we got spotted by these people and um, the alley is like protected now so I don't know what they do in the alley but there's always people there like like real low down looking people with like cell phones and they're like how the fuck does that person have a cell phone and uh, cause they're like you know they're like homeless people but they call they'll someone's paying for their cell phone so if they see somebody fucking around in the alleyway they call and then someone shows up in a sports car and it's always a different car every time but it's just crazy man it's so crazy um No, these are not handout cell phones. I'm sorry, they're not. These are, these guys are being paid to sit there all day and do drugs and call when someone enters the alleyway. I'm telling you right, I, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. It's, there's some little operation going on there. It was going on there a long time ago when I explored another building there and um, was pretty much threatened not to come back. Um, that was like the only time I ever got threatened, but there, they have these, uh, it was just like that bowling alley up in, um, up in, uh, uh, where was the bowling alley? The one that I said was in New Jersey, it was actually in Delaware, the Pine Creek bowling alley or something. We went and, it was a long time ago, years ago, and I went and filmed this bowling alley and when we were done filming it, uh, my friend Justin was with me, and Justin and I went outside, and these fucking dudes, like, it was like a zombie movie, like, they came, they came out of the woods, and they were, like, disheveled and dirty, and, uh, and they were basically being paid to watch the bowling alley, um, and man, they... I like, they like, we're chasing the car as we're pulling out. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm like, geez, I'm glad they didn't see us when we went in. I don't know how they didn't see us. I guess they were off doing something else and then came back and realized that we were in the theater, I guess. I don't know. But that, that was, uh, that was a little hairy. Um, that was an incredible bowling alley. Uh, well, an incredible shoot anyway, because why are you blinking your fucking lights at? Oh, that's why. Sorry. I'm not paying attention. It was a yellow blinking light. I always stop at yellow blinking lights. Because the way, li listen, the way people drive in Baltimore, you're best to stop at the yellow blinking light. Don't go through it. Stop and look both ways because you're going to end up getting creamed. I've seen it many times. Um, anyway, that bowling alley, uh, that whole thing. So it's the same thing. It's just, 
some probably scumbag drug dealer who keeps people around um, that are unfortunates to uh, keep an eye out and act as security for their interests. Um, but I, I, th- I think I have an idea of what's going on. I just... Um, it kind of started... Um, when I filmed the Epstein building in the Dead Mall series, that giant old department store with escalators and it was abandoned. I don't know if you guys remember that one. That was a long time ago, too. Well, no, it was like maybe like, hold on, two, three, four, like four years ago. Maybe three and a half. Um, Uh, we were, uh, I filmed that place, and then the proper people went with me, and we got hassled by this dude, well, we were, we heard dogs, there were, we didn't hear them, they were inside the building, there were dogs inside of this building, so we called animal control, which I've done before, when there's dogs inside of an abandoned building, uh, called animal control, and, um, they uh, showed up, and then the guy who owned the dogs was there, and some other guys, and gave us the fucking, basically with like, don't come back here, um, in a very threatening kind of way, so I wasn't about to argue, so I was like, whatever, I got the film, I don't need anything else, um, but that same alley, there's, it seems like it's amped up a little bit. I don't know what they're doing there. But the last time I drove through, there was a guy at the end, and he was trying to stop the, my, he was trying to stop my truck, and I was live streaming. I don't, maybe that was uh, last week. I can't remember, but um, I was live streaming. Uh, but there's shady, shady stuff going on at that place. All part of the job. Now, I'm planning on uh, visiting Wisconsin. um, Well, Milwaukee. Not really Wisconsin. I'm not really going to bother with the state of Wisconsin. I'm just going to the city. Um to film stuff there, so if you guys have any recommendations, I sure would appreciate them, because I want to go see, uh, what I can find, oh, I'm not going to the Wisconsin Dells, isn't that dumb, that dumb building they build on a corn or something, or, like, they have, like, butter sculptures and Well, I would love to travel around the United States, but unfortunately, I have a dog and a cat, and, um, responsibilities at home, just work, you know, I, I mean, eventually I'm going to add traveling back into the schedule again, but right now, um, You know, I just, I can't just be packing up and going on long trips. I just don't have, like, a stable, like, I don't have a stable assistant, and I don't, well, I don't have an assistant at all. This is the first time I've ever been assistantless, and uh, I'm not married anymore, so I don't have someone to watch Wee Wee, and I don't trust anyone to watch her, so... Except my parents, I don't mind them. And Dale, Dale's good with her, but... I get nervous with her. Because if I go away, I'm all I think about is me. I'm like, oh god, is she okay? And I'm texting, and... Yeah, you know, well, if you're a dog owner, you know how it is. You 
love your dogs. I just want her to be safe. I feel like, um, uh, like, I'm like talking stupid tonight. Does that make sense to you? Talking stupid. Jesus. People write a paragraph of thing. I can't read it while I'm driving. paragraph. You know what, Neil? Fucking mother... Oh my god. These roads, man, are unbelievable. How could they... I like how the mayor, like, every other day is like, oh, we filled 800 potholes today. I have not seen one pothole filled. I have been driving around the city. There's potholes everywhere. I don't know what he's talking about. Where are they filled? They must be going to the rich white neighborhoods to fill potholes, because I haven't seen any potholes filled um, around my neighborhood at least I mean these potholes are outrageous they even got cones down so you don't run into them alright I'm just going to pull over here for just a second because I just want to read this good morning London Um, JG says, uh, I've been telling you to come to Milwaukee. You could check our, uh, Dahmer, yeah, the Dahmer stuff, um, but it's an empty lot. Yeah, JG, I've already been there. Um, and Rob, next time by Ford, think Ford first. Yeah, I, I don't get into the whole Ford Ram discussion, um, I just put the key in and turn, and the, the truck goes, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not, like, like, I'm not a, like, guy who sits on his toilet taking a shit and reading Auto Trader, like, I don't do that, so, I didn't buy the truck because I work construction, I bought it because, <laughs> I don't know why I bought it, it just, I enjoy driving a truck. Let's see, here we go. Oh, Ford's sucks. Ram sucks. Ford's the best. Ram's the best. It's like, ugh. Just, I don't give a shit. Which one's the best? But, Rob, you need to understand something. That pothole was, like, six inches deep. You, no vehicle is going to survive that pothole. So, that is a pothole that will will literally shred your tire and you'll end up um you know in my old car my last car um I hit a pothole on uh route 40 um I was just getting ready to go out of town I was like so excited to go on a filming trip and uh I get on route 40 in the highway to nowhere which is right in the city and the damn, um, the, the fucking, um, I hit a pot of this pothole is ridiculous and it just shredded the tire on the BMW. So I went to this, um, the closest tire shop was like literally like hundreds of feet away. And I went there and it was like used tires. Those this place was the in the inside where the the tires were looked like Texas Chainsaw Massacre two like the tunnels that were all like decorated and she's running through the tunnels and stuff and they live underground at that amusement park that's what it looked like it was fucking incredible they had every tire known to man in that place uh, the guy walked me all the way back through this old decrepit warehouse and found the tire for the car. <laughs> He's like, here it is. Brought it out, changed it, charged me. I think it was. I think it. I think the total was maybe eighty bucks, eighty dollars. Now, if I had gone to BMW, it would have been three hundred and eighty dollars. So, um, I was very pleased with that ghetto tire shop, and so I've been back there. 
Uh, I haven't been back there. I told friends, if you need tires, go there. It's the cheapest shit. I mean, you get like a half life out of it, but you're still paying like a fraction of what the regular tire would cost. But this truck, I love this truck. I don't know why people are talk shit about this truck. I love this truck. It has never ever given me a day of headache. Not once. It's always run, always starts. You just gotta, like any engine, you gotta take care of it. Back. Sorry about that. Um, we had a little hiccup in the in the stream, um, but uh, we're now down at the in the Hamptons. This is the Hamptons. This is East Hampton. What the hell? This is East Hampton. <laughs> what the f Oh. That's... That was a guy getting a BJ. That was a guy getting a BJ. <laughs> this park never disappoints. No nothing in Baltimore ever disappoints. There's always some low down dirty ass shit going on no matter what day time of day whatever it does not matter the shit just never stops look at these kids down here on the beach what are they looking for needles oh these poor kids i Oh, they're like crabbing or something. They have crab, uh... They have crab nets. They're trying to catch crabs. Now, this is a really fucked up mess here. But it's a beautiful view of the bridge, the key bridge, as you can see in the distance. Oh, ow! But this is the East Hamptons of Baltimore. A lowly place with lowly folk. If you're out here, summer fishing, summer fucking, some are shooting, some are sucking. You never know what, what's going on under the bridge, under the key bridge. There's a lot of people down here tonight, shit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn here so we can get a beautiful view. Isn't that picture perfect? You can see uh, Fort, Fort Carroll is out there off to the right of the screen. Actually, you can't see it. It's like right next to it. There you go. See, there it is. It's like an island out there. And it's now a bird sanctuary. And, um, 
It is uh, beautiful. You know, Sal, the, Sal, um, the mall guy, Sal Almadeo, he's a good friend of mine. He lives in Baltimore, too. Um, he was just texting me about that Ford. He, he has, uh, him and his dad have a boat. And they're always going out on the boat. And he, he was talking about going around the, the island a few times. And um, there's a lighthouse on there. There's actually, if you, on, on YouTube, there's videos of it. Um, hey, Destiny Glenn. Destiny Glenn is here. The gorgeous Destiny Glenn. She's a beautiful woman. Who I would marry if I were heterosexual. I'd be like, Destiny, you're my destiny. Come to Baltimore. I'll pay. Destiny, we're going to get married. You and I, honey. Alina's here too, and Apocalypse Jen. You both would be wives as well. All my wives come to Baltimore. Bring yourself to Baltimore. Bring yourself to Daddy. I love you. We'll get married and live in suburbia. And we'll have a satanic cult in the basement. <laughs> uh, but no, 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 no. No puss for me. can't deal with it. I mean, I could just, you know, well, I'm not like a pure gay guy, so. Like, pure gay who's never messed around with a woman. I'm not there. My, uh, my, um, well, we're not really fiancé. We decided to not, uh, um, we decided to wait a little bit. I didn't really get into it, but, you know, when I went to Ecuador, I went down to see, um, this guy who we were going to get married, and then we had, we talked, and we were like, eh, maybe right now is not the best time. Well, anyway, it's been a year, it's, um, it's been a couple, almost two years, I think, and, um, that guy is back in the United States teaching school, teaching school. And his parents are coming up next week and they're going to stay with me for a week and they barely speak English. And, um, I, I don't know what to do. They speak a little bit of English, but they're like, you know, Spanish speaking, they're Mormon, which is another thing like. Or Mormon. I don't know what to what to uh, what to do. Um. So he teaches um, English. Actually, he speaks Spanish really well. But his parents are awesome. I mean, they're they're very liberal for being Mormon. Um, but they're awesome. And listen, we, listen to me, okay, everyone, right now. If you're saying, oh, they're Mormon, if you're Christian, you're just as fucking nutty as they are, okay? In my book. Like, oh, they're Mormon? You're, if you're Catholic, you're just as fucking lunatic as they are. So, let's take a step back and look at our own religion and study as to where it all came from, which is, it's all a bunch of horseshit. That's just my opinion. Now, it may not be your opinion, but I've never judged anyone based on their faith or their religion because if it brings them peace and it doesn't affect me, why would I complain about it? Do you know what I say? Or do you know what I mean? But people are like, oh, the Mormons. Some of, you know, I have a friend... Well, there are a couple who are Mormon, who are dear friends of mine, and they're very liberal and 
Um, so not all Mormons are, are bad. Not all Scientologists are bad either. I have Scientologist friends, just not Danny Masterson. But Danny Masterson will have a lot of friends in prison. He will find Jesus behind bars, trust me. Because he's going to be praying to Jesus that his anal fissures um, heal fast before the next session happens. Piece of shit. Everyone's saying hi to Brian. Who is Brian? Brian. Who is Brian? <laughs> Do I know Brian? Where is Brian? Brian. Brian Ferris? Brian Forrest? I, who is that? I don't know who that is. Brian. Is he a YouTube uh, creator? I don't. <laughs> Can someone just give me a simple answer? I've never seen so many people go, Hi, Brian. Oh, yeah, is it Brian from Proper People? I haven't spoken to them in a while. Nick Edwards is here, everyone. Nick. Good evening, Nick. Good evening, Nicholas. Hi, Brian. It's so good to hear from you, Brian. Brian. Hi, Brian. Oh, Lord. It's such a fabulous night. Everyone's out having a nice time. See, the funny thing is, is that uh, most everyone down here tonight is Hispanic. So everyone's fishing and crabbing. This is the park where I'm afraid of white people. The white people here are the worst. Hispanics are great. That water looks so nasty. Oh my god. It looks like fetid toilet water. <coughs> Look at the water. It's like... Brian Fortis. Um, okay, the water. Jen asked if the crabs are edible. They absolutely are. Absolutely. Alyssa Bell, just... Alyssa, if you are watching... I am seeing your text right now and wondering... This is how far I go to make sure the orders from the website are sent out properly. I... got 
uh, a uh, package returned. I am just trying to make sure that, uh, verify her address. I have called, texted, and emailed because I, I haven't heard from her. So I thought maybe she's dead. And I went on to Google and couldn't find any information. But it's Alyssa Bell, not related. And she is down in Gainesville, Florida. And she ordered prints. I remember she ordered uh, Lonely Motel and Vacancy. So she enjoys the, the motel prints. But Doll, if you're watching, I will text you back when I get off of the stream. Okay, well. Oh man, I hate seeing dead possums. What is this? Is this an animal or a shirt? That's a shirt, probably from a murder victim. Guys, should we go see the scary car that's sitting over here? See that light over there? It's a car sitting on that road. What could they possibly be up to? Should we go find out? Let's see what they're going. What what are they doing down here? Are they having Are they performing lingus? Let's turn these brights off first of all and pray that no one comes out of the woods. This person was sitting here when I came into the place with their lights on. Oh God, potholes, large potholes. And they're sitting there. Oh my God, so, ugh. Okay, now I know what's going on. Yes, I do. Can I just go around like this way? Fantastic. Oh, is that a couch? The guy in this vehicle um, is, uh, oh, I think I just ran over someone. The guy in the vehicle. I'm not even, oh, oh, oh. Um, okay, that's kind of sad, but whatever. It's, um, a very large man. Probably a little bit bigger than me. I would say a lot. He's a lot bigger than me. Um, he looks doesn't look like he has much mobility. And he is down here, sitting in the dark, waiting for either the D to come to him, or he goes and finds the D, but he's going to find some D. Eventually, everyone... Everyone has fun at Fort Armstead. Everyone has fun at Fort Armstead. Okay. <laughs> well, back on the road again. He just looks the part, you know what I mean? He just looks the part of <clears throat> like a creep. Like imagine me in a playground wearing my Ultra Goliath glasses. Like that's what feelings it brings to you. That's what that felt like seeing that man. Very um <laughs> very uh, uh I don't know what would be the word. Anyway, it doesn't... We, we need to move on and talk about something else. <laughs> because... <laughs> I don't know why it was...
damn it. See, it is true. It is true that I do... Enjoy. Oh, oh, no. oh. Excuse me. I enjoy going out on Saturdays. Like, not this. Like, out, out. But wait a minute. Was it Saturday? No, it was last Sunday. I went out with my friend Jeffrey. We had so much fun. It was like the best time it just felt good to unwind we had a really good time it was fun and um this dude man he would not leave us alone like he was like we we were like oh we're going to this other place and we were trying to leave and this guy's like no let me come with you and and i'm like so we're like um okay uh Whatever, and then we went outside and he started talking to somebody else. So we booked it and went to the other place. And then uh, Brian Forrest, the nicest YouTuber on earth. Brian Forrest. I did, who is Brian Forrest? And Brian, that's not like an insult. I swear, it's not. I'm not trying to be an insult. Because uh, I don't watch YouTube, so don't feel bad because I really don't know a lot about YouTube. Somebody put through, uh, there's two super chats and I can't even read them because they're literally, Brian is in every stream basically, Brian Forrest, I mean the name does sound kind of familiar now that I think about it, but but Brian, if you're like some big YouTuber, I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't watch YouTube, so I would not know who you are. He's been here for years. Brian Forrest, okay. I can't take any more Brian Forrest talk. I, I can't deal with it right now, because I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What do I say? Brian Forrest. I stand with Brian. Oh my God. Okay, Brian is a super fan. All right, well, Brian, it's very nice to meet you. Although, you've probably been here for years. Um, Brian, you have to understand, I don't remember what happened yesterday, so... You'll have to excuse me, but... I do appreciate your presence and your support. Go buy a print. This is DanBell.com. Oh, that smell. It smells like the beach. A place I never get to go. I didn't do shit this summer, but fucking... It, the summer was okay. I'll give it two and a half stars out of five. The two and a half was... It gets two stars because I was feeling so... I felt great the whole summer. I did not have any kind of depression or anything. I just felt really well. And so that was good. I wish I had gone to the beach. Okay. I did not go to the beach. Um, I had ample opportunity to go to the beach. Many invites, and I never went. And, um, yeah, 
yeah. I mean, it would be great to sit around and sit on a beach chair and soak up the sun. Um, well, uh, walk out on that pier, but I don't think you can get over here. I think it's gated. That certainly looks gated to me. Oh my god, huge puddle. That was awesome. Was fun. That's why I bought the truck to do stupid shit like that. That was a, a blast. Almost 11 o'clock and I'm still drinking coffee. Anyway, Sprouts. It's where to go. I gotta go back. I'll go tomorrow. Or I could just Grubhub. Or not Grubhub. Um, no. You know, I'm so sick of Grubhub. I really hate Grubhub. And the last three times, oh my god, it smells like a dirty vagina. What is that smell? Ugh. Oh my god, it's fucking horrible. Oh. Oh, that's what it is. It's fantasies. <laughs> the strip club. <laughs> no, it stinks. It's a horrible smell. <sighs> okay, fresh air. Fresh air. Anywho, um, like I was saying, um, I don't even remember what I was saying. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I've been going out on Saturday nights. I've been having a lot of fun, too, actually. Um, but uh, I just, like, this summer, I should have unwound a little bit more and not been so focused on work and sort of just relaxed and kind of take a step back and enjoy life uh, for a moment. But I never, I never do that. I just keep going, keep going. Hmm. And I wanted to start, um, I'm gonna, st I think I'm gonna start doing uh, I know this sounds horrible, <laughs> but, um, over the years of doing this, I have saved some of the most incredible, um, comments that people have made about me to denigrate or they just hate my guts or whatever. And I have, I save them in a, in a file, and I keep only the good ones, like, not, not ones that are, like, whatever, you know, I, I only keep the ones that, like, the person actually sat there and really thought, like, how can I make this the most devastating comment ever made? Um, 
but anyway, I'm going to start doing prints of the comments, um, as, as like an art piece, so like, or like an art kind of collage, but I was thinking about doing four by six of the comments, and selling them, which, to profit off the comment would drive the person even more insane, um, because then I can just keep, you know, saying, well, we profited off this comment, but what I think I would like to do is take the money that comes in from that and donate it to, like, some bullying thing, like the Trevor Project, or so something like that, like, something nice, um, that was just a thought, I mean, who would buy a nasty fucking comment printed, printed on museum quality paper? Some of the comments are so ridiculous. I mean, some of the, they, the some of the comments really make me angry. Like I read them, I'm like, what is wrong with this person? There was somebody on here, and I don't know if they're watching, but last week, or I don't know when it was, I posted that video of me going through Lexington Market, and um, in the beginning of the video, I got two crab cakes to eat for dinner and I sh and this is like I totally understand there is nothing more repugnant than watching a fat person eat on camera I can't stand it if I am on YouTube and I see a fat person eating I will I, I gotta turn it off I can't I can't deal with it um so that's where it stems from. So I just did one little shot of me eating a piece of the the crab cake. Well, this set off this person whose comment was saved, by the way. It was that stupid that I actually saved it. But they're like, they're like, uh, oh, I can't watch this mukbang. This is that's enough food for three people. This is gluttony at its finest. Yada, yada, yada. They went on and on. I mean, this person was so disturbed to watch me take one... One fork. Like, just a little fork piece of crab cake. And they went fucking crazy. And, um... Because, you know, now nowadays... If you're overweight, you're gonna die. Which is, you know, true for some people. I Hopefully not me. Because um, I, I do have plans to turn this around. I just have to, have to actually initiate and enact the plans and stop stalling and saying, oh, Monday, 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 which I did with cigarettes for a long time until I finally got down to doing it. But anyway. And having a fight with the gym, which I've been doing, which I finally won the fight. But the gym, like, I had to cancel, and they, they have some, it's some scheme going on over at this gym, I don't know, you know the gyms are kind of wonky on this sign up, and they're like, oh, sign here, and then you suddenly owe them a thousand dollars, that's basically what happened with this gym, and I really got pissed off, and, you know, I'm dealing with an employee there who I have known her for a long time, and I feel bad you know, but, like, it's my money, so I'm sure she'd do the same thing if they were wrong. Anyway, I won that, but I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going down there to argue at a gym while people who are, like, all, like, in shape and shit, they walk in and see this fat guy, like, where's my fucking refund? <laughs> where's my fucking refund? I'm depressed, I can't work out. <laughs> How dare you do this to me? Um, that scene's playing in my head over and over and over again, and I'm like, oh my fucking god, like, I can't go down there and do this, so, <laughs> so, anyway, um, I was, the, the comments, and there was another comment, I did this podcast called, um, the Forehead Fables. I've never heard of them, but anyway, the guy who runs the podcast got in touch with me. They asked me to come on the show, and I said, sure. So I did it. Um, 
And because it was a show, like, you know, that has followers, um, so I went on the show, and, um, the, the host started talking about, like, do I carry when I explore abandoned buildings and stuff like this, and I've always said this, and it's sort of funny, um, how all this works, but as far as me carrying in buildings, um, I don't do it, because it's a felony, you're, if I was trespassing with a weapon, a weapon that is illegal in the city of Baltimore, so if I went into one of these places, had a weapon, that's illegal, I'm committing a felony, Um, which I could face three to five years in prison, but forget the prison time, the lawyer costs and fees would be through the fucking roof. So it would cost me a lot of money for that little stunt. Um, I have always, in, in the years and years that I've been doing this, I have always used my wits to de-escalate anything that could possibly happen. And I'm really good at it. Um, I prefer, I don't know, verbal, like, you know, let's calm down kind of thing. Instead of just shooting somebody in a building, in an abandoned building while I'm making a video. That's insane. Like, think about that for a moment. That's insane. That's insane thinking. But the funniest thing is, and I'm going to get to what some, some gun these gun people, I mean, I don't mean to be, like, um, judgy or whatever, but, like, don't come to me jerking off with guns. I have guns. I have a permit. I don't go around, like, oh, look at my guns, and I, I don't do that. Um, so, I just, it's just not my thing. You may be into them. Some people are obsessed with them. It's fine. But it seems like these people can't have a, a, just a, a, a nuanced conversation without throwing a fit and crying about it. Because I said I told this on the show, uh, I, you know, that thing about the felony. And the, this guy's like, I knew it was going to be a fat white guy with a beard. Um <laughs> And he's like, he's like, I knew it would be a fat depressed white guy with a beard and I'm just like what does that have to do with anything like what what the fuck are you talking about these comments on my videos where people are like do you carry do you carry um I hope you're strapped I hope you're carrying no I'm not now this is the funny thing I'm in West Virginia okay uh, exploring a trailer, a mobile home next to a, a pretty much deserted rural road in the middle of fucking nowhere. Um, and the comments come up. How dare you trespass? How dare you? You're going to get shot. You better watch out. Someone's going to shoot you. Um, there's a law in West Virginia now that you can shoot someone from up to two miles away and it's legal. And how dare you do that? If I'm in the city you know, the city, if I'm in the city, I hope you're carrying, I hope you have a gun, you better shoot, nobody ever says, how dare you trespass in the city, no, all they want for me to do, just think about it, I'm not even, I don't have to say it, because if you don't get what I'm trying to say, then I just, just think about what I'm saying for a minute, think about it, West Virginia, Baltimore City. Okay. Um, interesting. And it's it's always been that way, and it's annoying. It's, it, I find it so irritating. Thousands of people ask me if I carry. And I'm like, yeah, two giant balls. That's what I carry. I'm like, we don't need to... That's it. Like, the conversation's over. So...
so that's what uh, that's where that comment stemmed from that I was a fat white person white guy with a beard who was depressed um I just don't, I don't get, like, I, these gun people, like, I don't understand how they come up with this shit in their head, but you're not, um, I'm not even going to get into it, because I don't want to get in another argument with some fucking gun idiot, and I don't get in arguments with them, I just block them, but, you know, you got to understand my point and my side, um, I don't live in, like, fucking the backwoods where you live. Um, We're not allowed to just grab a gun and go walk around, walk in the convenience store with a holster. We don't do that here. It's not allowed. It's illegal. You may not agree with it, but that's the law. We live in a country of laws. You have to follow them. Otherwise, you go to jail. So I don't want to go to fucking jail. I don't want to get fined. I don't want to lose my permit. So I follow the law. Anything else you have to say is stupid. And if you're going to sit there and tell me about... Well, you're saying this about gun nuts. First of all, you're telling a gun owner... You're allegedly a responsible gun owner. You're telling a gun owner to carry a weapon into an abandoned building that's private property. That right there shows how irresponsible of a gun owner that you are if you're giving out that kind of advice. That's not good advice. There's a toilet there. That would be a perfect picture. Um, That's all I'm saying. So, you know, but I guess that makes me a fat white person with a beard. I I have no fucking idea where the hell that came from. But, uh, yep. Boy, they really lit the shit out of this over here. Now, this is all hookers over here. Hold on. Arizona. Um, out with them verbally and defuse the fight. My little brother is brilliant at that. Yeah. I mean, that's what you do. That's how I handle shit. You know, I don't have, I don't, I don't have any, um, desire to go and kill somebody while I'm urban exploring. I mean, different thing if you're coming into my home and I'm like armed and you're breaking into my home. Yeah, I'm going to shoot you, but I'm not going to shoot someone while I'm going through a fucking abandoned building. That's insane. That would be saying goodbye to a lot of things. My uh, my YouTube career would probably be over. Everything would be over. So that's all I'm saying. If you want to argue with me about that point, you're, there is no argument. If you you should be agreeing with me 100. percent But gun people love to argue. I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying some of them get to this point where they feel like they have to argue any kind of, like, control. Like, you're, I'm following the law. That's not, that's just, you know, controlling my existence into not going to prison or being fined or losing my permit and my guns. Get it? Got it? Good. But I'm just over it, man. But I got, like, I was on that show and I got a bunch of messages from people who were like, technically it's not illegal. And I'm like, dude, you're a fucking, like, a welder who lives in, you know, Tennessee. You don't know the law. So don't sit here and tell me. I I just can't, I can't stand it. It's like people who's like, I'm a constitutionalist. But they've never been to college. Okay, well, because you've read the Constitution doesn't mean that you're a constitutionalist. Oh my god. Oh, and no offense if you're a welder in Tennessee. I don't got any problems with any of all welders out there. It's a good job. 
the reason I brought it up was because my dad's friend, my dad, it was my dad's birthday, and, um, my parents are very right-wing, you know, like, obsessively right-wing, they're irritating in that way, because my mother will do anything to bring up something political, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, like, I don't know, you'll, you'll be like, mom, um, could I get the salt? My mom will be like, you know, I think Mitch McConnell had too much salt. You know, she's like, anything she can, you know, like, oh, the sky's so blue today. She's like, well, it's going to be red in November. You know, that kind of, she just can't stop herself. So I have to tell her to shut up or I'm putting her in the worst home I can find. Um, but my father, his, his cousin is, um, a welder, and he, he was talking about, like, how he worked at Bethlehem Steel, and he was working with this dude, and, um, the dude, a, a molten, molten hot drip of iron fell into this guy's boot, and the guy started screaming and rip, trying to rip his boot off. He's, like, dancing around trying to get this boot off. It's, it's, uh, he basically has melting iron, melted iron in his fucking, molten iron in his fucking boot. Like, Jesus, man. I don't think today that would, I think they would have more precautions maybe today. But My friend, Erica is an artist, she does sculpture, and she is a welder, she does all, she welds in her studio, and I was watching her do it once, and I was like, I was like, wow, man, that's awesome, but that's a real fucking job, that's a hard job, so, that was not meant to be an insult in any way. And welders make good money, too. I think. I mean, you should if you're melting metal. Anyway, let's turn this camera back around before I get myself in more trouble. We're in... I haven't been down here in a while. We're in the beautiful Mill Hill... Mount Clare area, and um, I thought that was a man sitting there on the road, but it's not. Anyway, you guys, um, that is what I was trying to say. Um, I'm just... I gotta... I, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I just don't give a shit, like... I gotta get over, like, the shit that people want to argue about online. Like, I'm not here to argue. I'm here to share my point of view and to make content. And you can disagree with me. That's fine. But I'm not going to argue with you. Um, I just don't have the, the time nor the patience um, I just don't do it, so, you know, I'm kind of a one-sided kind of guy, I just, I have my opinions, and you can like them or hate them, and you can write about it online, I don't care, I just don't want to argue with people, there's the popo. This is right here on the right. This is a little, like cocaine crack you can buy. Just about anything you need right here. I can't believe there's nobody out here tonight. What what is today? Today is Saturday. There's like no one out.
Okay, this is a dilemma. Things just end here. Like, what the fuck? Just ends. And then it says, no parking on lot, which they're talking about this lot here, I guess. I don't understand why they own the whole lot. Damn, I got fucking pissed. There's like a goddamn Breaking Bad fucking Winnebago here. And they're going in and out of that house because they got fucking... Oh, this is the fucking... Is this the alley? No, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. There's plenty of shit going on back here right now. Look at this shit. Oh, don't move, kitty. That little kitty cat. Ooh, damn, man. Nope, oh, she's shooting up. Woman's there, sitting there with her dog, shooting up. That's what I just start to do when I'm walking Lee Lee. Just pull out a needle myself some medicine <laughs> while I'm walking wheeze or some guy on the street heard me call her Weezer and he's like yeah, I dress just like Buddy Holly uh uh Anna Mary Tyler Moore and I was I started laughing so hard that he did that but then there was this this like this guy, he's cute. He's like, um, probably in his twenties. This like black dude, and uh, he wears this. He wears a Dolly Parton shirt. Like, I've seen him twice now. He's wearing Dolly Parton, and I just started singing Jolene, 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 Jolene. And he like, I don't even know if he knows who Dolly Parton is. To be honest with you, because he doesn't seem to have much reaction when I start. Singing Jolene, but I'm like, do you know who Dolly is? Jolene, 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 Jolene. Jesus. Oh, that alleyway stunk so bad. There's a uh, lady of the night working hard. Oh my god. And she is like a fucking mess, that woman, that poor woman. She has like real thick glasses on, and it looks like she has like scoliosis or something. But she's like looking a little. Ratchet. But when you want to get your drugs, that's what, I mean, that's what everyone's fucking doing out here, trying to get drugs. What's back here? I don't know if I've ever been back here before. If it's a dead end, that'll be great, because I really have no fucking pits. Ooh, damn. There's a woman, you guys. Look at this little building here. Look at that little building. Well, that's an old ass building right there. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and go back, but there's this lady, like, behind a bando and she's sitting on the ground and it looks like she's wigging out but I'm not getting out of the car here 
to pay. It feels a little... Um, it feels like someone is going to pop out and try to cut off my wiener. So I'm very nervous about this area here. Am I going to hit the fence behind me? I'm looking in this thing. We're getting close. I love that 90s Mercedes right there. See that? Brooke asks what's usually in the syringes. Um, pee. Haven't you ever had a pee high, Brooke? <laughs> People inject urine around here. It's fun. It gives you that urine high that... Look, look at this fucking thing. Look. Why is it sinking into the ground? It has a it has a thing on it right there. But this bitch is sunk into the fucking ground. What is going on? Real explosion. What the hell is that? Real explosion, where, what? Can anyone read that? I can't even fucking see what it says. I don't even know what that is. But all I know is it has fucking curtains in the back. It's creepy. Oh, bus error. I'm sorry you're having a bad day, but your day could not be anywhere near as bad as this woman who is... Look at this. Look at this. It's like out of a fucking movie. Oh, my God. The poor soul. Fucking horrible. Oh. Now, that is a bad day. So nobody's day can be as bad as that. That's a bad day, but a self-imposed bad day. Yes, that's what she's doing. She's praying. She's like, please, please, God, let me be able to get my hair peroxided again. Dear Jesus, I want my hair to be blonde. I'm so tired of these roots. so tired of these roots I want to go off the clear all color chart completely oh guys I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see this wondrous neighborhood here's uh they got a lawn chair It's such a bizarre fucking place. Is that somebody else passed out? Look at this, look. I mean, that guy looks like he's fucking dead. There are just people, like, laying in the street everywhere. bump. When people see the sign bump down here, they get excited. They're like, who's, who's got a bump? <laughs> who's got a bump? So here we are up at the avenue. And, um, oh, over here is where 
that uh, video I did, um, what did I call it, the something, something nightmare, I can't remember what I called it, anyway, because I changed the title, they locked that back up, but we, I got in there to check out the inside of that place, but they locked it up again. It was open when I came. I don't know why it's locked up. The whole building is just, it's just abandoned. There's nothing, it's just a bunch of junk in there. Holy shit. I never noticed this before. Holy shit, man. That's an old fucking... Like, that's an old farmhouse right there. See that? Um, Hex, uh, Hexam, yeah, I'm gonna do another, um, Halloween drive. I'm gonna go right down to, uh, uh, that, that guy, um, what's his name, Trevor or something? Remember we went to his, um, Halloween thing last year? Eastwood Haunts, I think. That, this is an old farmhouse in West Baltimore. And I would love to check that out because those are, you don't, you just don't see those. Gavin, Gavin, thank you. It is Gavin, yeah. Eastwood Haunts. I love that kid. So yeah, I'll be going back down there again. Check him out. Anyway, that's uh, I've never noticed that before. That old place over there, and now it's all blurry. Anyway, let's forge ahead. Oops, I'm gonna put it in drive. That is strange. I, I have not noticed that before. Um Oh, he's in there working. I can hear his fucking radio going. That's where all the, that's where that building was with all the needles and shit. And someone cleared that driveway. I guess they're parking up there. But to the left here in the woods, these were all, we were walking through those fucking... Oh my god, look at all the garbage that people have dumped. That is just... Wow. Let me turn around. I have got to pee so bad I can taste it. So I really have to find a place to pee first. Fuck. I thought I could pee here, but obviously there's a car coming, so I'm just gonna pop out and piss right here. Just keep going, dude. Damn. All these... All those tires are all dumped. Hexham, Baltimore, where anywhere is a fucking toilet. This is so true. Uh, Arizona Alchemy again. Um, a random farmhouse. That would be cool to see during daylight sometime. You know what, Arizona? I'll go there tomorrow and do a filament video. Or, you know what? I'll put it on Patreon first. Guys, if you're not on my Patreon, um, I don't know how much more I can beg you to do it. 
Because once you get over there, you're like, why didn't I do this a long time? Every person who joins up inevitably says to me, why didn't I do this a long time ago? I'm like, I don't know. But I will tell you that you will have fun. Lots of fun stuff. Next week I'm going to be posting a lot on Patreon. Okay, no fuck, no fucking way. I can't believe this. What the fuck? You see this? Okay, guys. This building here was abandoned for years. The overgrowth, everything up there, you couldn't see a fucking thing. Happy Quails got rejected from the fan club. Well, you'll definitely not be rejected if you pay money. <laughs> Happy Quails. You should just go over to, pay, to Patreon. And you'll be welcome with open arms as long as your credit card works. We take Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was, some people were saying, um, oh shit, is that somebody standing up there? I think, uh, I think there's someone standing up there watching us. I didn't notice him, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh, Daphne, thank you so much, darling. You didn't need to do that. Guys, I, I gotta tell you, Daphne, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, is that a guy? Uh, that lot has been fucking overgrown and nothing up there for fucking years. And now suddenly it's all the grass is cut, the trees are gone, and you can see the place again. That is so weird. Uh, again, thank you, Daphne, and uh, Arizona Alchemy, and everyone else who's contributed tonight. And uh, if you go to thisisdanbell.com and buy a print, I'll be even more happy. Thank you. Thank you. This is my whole life, is begging for sales. But I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so this building right here, you see that? That was the building in um, the video with all the syringes and shit on the floor. And it says, fuck hope, I want dope. It's like right in that door right there. This is a sketchy ass place. Like, even the car that passed us has now pulled over because they think we're, like, I don't know. Like, they pulled over. They're probably doing some bullshit. But that that structure right there is where it says... Uh, and then this is where we came out of the woods, and it's somebody cleared it. Why would they just randomly pull over there? It's very strange. This road is nothing but, um... Sally Cooper, are you gonna go to the nice area sometimes? No. What's wrong with you, Sally? Sally, are you part of the Friends of Baltimore? Here to interrupt my work going around the city and showing everyone the worst of the city. How dare you, Sally? Uh, 
no, Sally. Um, I really should, shouldn't I? But I mean, we do on some streams. We do on some streams. Sally. I love that name, Sally. My first partner had a cat. And it was a boy. They thought it was a girl when they got it, but it was a boy. But it was named Sally. And um, Sally loved to talk. So we'd be like, Sally. And he would be like, <laughs> he was so cute and so funny. All right, let's go follow the, the, let's go see the fire. How about that? fire or is it going to be a giant toe? Man, he's fast. Don't, don't do it. Where the hell did it go? Oh, they're all up here. Could be an accident. This one's okay, it's for the fire department. Come on everyone, go, I wanna see fire. I'm seeing fire and I've seen rain. I'm seeing sunny days that I thought would never end. I think sometimes I could have found a friend. And I always thought I'd see you here again. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. But I always thought I'd eat dog shit again. Oh my god, come on, people. Where the fuck is the fire? Jesus, man. Bro. There's, like, it's weird because there's a fire department over here, so I don't know why those fire engines, or maybe there's another, uh, something else going on somewhere else. Oh, God. Dear Lord, protect me. I, I know I'm running red lights, but I just want to see what's going on. There is a ambulance behind me. I mean, it's like way behind me, so I'm going to pull over and let it go by. No, I'm going to go up here just a little bit further. Where the hell did it go? Look, there's cops here. We missed the fight. We, there's no way that we missed it. There's no way. That was a letdown. 
Nobody does it better. Makes me feel sad for the rest. Nobody does it half as good as you. Baby, you're the best. I wasn't looking. But somehow you found me I tried to hide your love And like heaven above me The spy who loved me Is keeping all my secrets safe tonight Alright guys, guess where we are this is where the fucking children's asylum was. Right up this drive. Is they got a bunch of no trespassing signs. But I'm gonna go up anyway. Cause I gotta pee really bad. But this is where the children's asylum used to be. And as you can see, Oh, God. I think I just hit something. As you can see... <laughs> oh, God, what the fuck was that? Shit. It sounded like something broke, but I don't see anything broken. Damn. Oh, man, this is just a dumping ground now. Holy shit, look at this. Um, it was, it was right here. This is where it was. It's now gone, and I have to pee so fucking bad I'm gonna die. I got to. Um, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm getting the fuck out of here because, um, I, I, fuck this. I just heard a bunch of kids giggling, like laughing. Like, I'm not even joking. What did I hit here that was so loud? I just heard a bunch of kids, like, giggling and shit. Oh, maybe I hit that? Maybe? Oh, I hit one of, some of this shit here. I'm, I'm like, dude, that was fucking creepy. That was really creepy. Unless, like, it was coming from down here. But I... So, I was taking a leak. Did you guys hear anything? Did you guys hear anything? No. Didn't hear anything. I mean, it literally sounded like, um, it, it sounded like a fucking kid, like, it sounded like a group of kids, like, giggling or laughing. So it was a little unnerving. It just sounded weird. It was probably, you know what? It was probably like over here, like there's kids outside playing and that's what I heard. Maybe the sound traveled over there. It just creeped me out a little bit. I was like, Ooh. 
it's creepy up there, but it's sad that 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 building is gone. That was such a fucking awesome. Oh my god, what else are we gonna hit tonight? Yeah, that building. I mean, it's it burned down. Um, and you know the thing is like. And this is such the truth. I felt a lot of guilt after that had happened. Um, Because I felt, like, responsible. Because I was the one who posted this video. And everybody was going insane over it. And just, you know. And so, obviously, eventually people found out where where the fucking place was. And started going up there and shooting videos. If I had not shot a video with the way things are now somebody would eventually have gone up there and filmed a video so my friend was like don't think about it that way just think about it as you you know you're you preserved what was left all right fire truck which way are you going chase a fire truck anymore. I don't know where they are, but uh, that is not a fun game. It's quite boring, actually. Um, so, yeah, so... I, my, my guilt was alleviated... I, I felt really guilty. I, I don't know. I just said, you know, maybe if I hadn't filmed the place, then maybe it would still be there. Um, but my friend said, the way things are, and they're, my friend is so right, it doesn't matter what it is, somebody will film it for YouTube. They have found every fucking nook and cranny. I'm surprised... Remember that whole, like, time that was so lame when people were like, I explore a $20 million drug dealer's mansion. And I'm like, oh, it's $20 million. <laughs> and I'm like, it just, to me, just seems so r- ridiculous when they, like, that was the title. Like, I explore a $65 million pimp mansion and it's like it's just an empty house you know it's it's an empty it's a mansion it's abandoned um oh yeah 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 the cars are always still there everything left inside well I used that once too on the pilot's the pilot's house video I did that as well. I was like, everything left inside. Because at that time, that worked. Got people to watch. That's when I stayed on top of trends. Everything left inside. And then you zoom in on pictures and play sad music. And everyone's like, oh my god, this video is so emotional. Even though there's no one in it, I'm just looking at a random photograph. This must mean something. And and the thing was, I'm so stupid. I don't know anything about aeronautics or anything. So the, the dead, the, the uh, pilot's house, abandoned pilot's house, I think that's what I called it. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> said, um, so I didn't know that the numbers on an on a plane or a Cessna or whatever like you can look them up and find out who the owner of the plane is and all this. I had no idea that's like, I mean I mean I, it's just something I wouldn't think about I just wasn't thinking about it so I put the video up well immediately <clears throat> you should tandem 
with Arthur Lawrence. Oh, Jen, thank you. That seemed like a stupid comment. Anyway, um, the, the, the video, uh, people, this one guy in particular was, wrote me this nasty fucking email. First, he was nice. He was, like, really nice. He's like, he's like, hey. He's like, I'm really curious as to where the pilot's house is located. Because um, I want to research and find out what happened to the pilot. And I was like, I just didn't respond. Because I'm like, I'm not giving, like, what the fucking address? Like, I'm not giving that to you. And, um, then, like, a week later, he wrote me back and he's like, I would appreciate a response. Well, that immediately would get you blocked, so I blocked him. Um, So then he started to... He started to uh, um, post the address. He found the address by... Get this. He examined the video so closely that he was able to zoom in there's a, there's a scene where I'm down in the basement and there's a pile of uh, magazines and he was able to zoom in on one of the magazines and get the address of the house off that tag off that little tag on the magazine I said you gotta be kidding me or this guy is like insane right um he starts posting the address online of the house. And then he's like, posted the name of the guy who lived there. Then he found the guy's daughter. And he wrote this long, rambling fucking thing on like, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Reddit. I, I think it was on my channel. I think it was on another video he wrote this long rambling thing. He's like, this is ridiculous. And th- for, for any, uh, YouTuber to make a video like this and then just keep us in the dark about what's going on. So everyone's just wondering in their head what happened. Like, that's the whole point, bud. Like you want your audience to like sit and speculate. That's the point. Like, could it be this? Could it be that? It gets discussion started. Hello. Um, so, anyway, he, um, this guy, uh, sends me an email, and he paid a private, I'm not even joking, this guy paid a private investigator to go and find out the woman, the daughter's address and phone number. And, <clears throat> oh, wait, no, he didn't contact me. The daughter of the pilot contacted me and said, and I'll show you this in a minute. What a mess. What the fuck is. Anyway, um, so the daughter sent me this email and she's like completely upset and distraught. And I'm I'm like, I didn't know what to do. Like I I was, she's like, this guy keeps calling me. I don't talk to my, I didn't talk to my father. You know, we, I didn't ask her why I didn't say like, Oh, did he, you know, like what happened? I don't want to know what happened. Um, so I just felt really bad about the whole thing and I didn't know I so I turned the comments off on the video for years and I finally turned them back on again recently but um people are that's literally the kind of people I deal with fucking lunatics I mean literally they're like insane they're like mentally insane I don't know what's wrong with these people 
but they are crazy. Uh, for a guy to pay, I mean, like, dude, <laughs> it, it's just not, it's like none of your fucking business. Like, why does, why do you have to insert yourself in something that has nothing to do with you? Um, and he got blocked on everything, so he went crazy because he couldn't post his findings. He wanted everyone... Like, what did he think he was going to get on my social media and be like, oh, here's the address, here's the guy, here's what I found out. Um, no. Like, you're blocked, dude. So I think he was trying to put it on Reddit or some similar website. I can't remember if it was Reddit. There was a website where there was, like, a Dan Bell page that people would go and talk on, and I can't remember which one it was. But he went on there and started posting shit, and then I asked the person who ran the website, I said, can you ban him? And they, they said, yeah. And they said we were going to ban him anyway because he's posting address. Like, you're not allowed to post addresses. Um, but at that time, I was getting shit from everyone because uh, I wasn't following the, the um, Urbex codes, you know, that you're... Like, <laughs> like, I guess there was some, like, code or something that you're supposed to follow. One of them was, you know, being anonymous, I guess. I was like, I'm not fuck that. I, I want to be known for what my work. I want to be anonymous. And then, like, the other, like, the other thing, um... There was a guy once who, this was a long, long time ago. Will, Will Kropinski and I went to Fredericktown Mall. Um, and we went up to the door and it, it was open. Like, it was not... The place is abandoned, it's closed down, and the fucking door is open just to walk in. Like, all the doors were open. So, that was the first video. I think that was the first abandoned mall I had ever been in. And it was, like, really exciting, but I was so nervous because I'm like, this is, a, like, a setup. Like, we're being set up. The door is being open. Um, but, anyway, so somebody posted... Oh, I've been here before. Hold on. So I posted, um, or somebody went on to uh, a Facebook page or something, and they said that I had been at Fredericktown Mall and I was smashing windows all over the mall, like, I, I was running through the mall like a lunatic, smashing windows, and I could not understand why somebody would lie like that, but then they were just jealous, because I found out who they were, and they had done a Frederick Town Mall video as well, and nobody watched their video, but everybody was watching mine, so they were just, but that's what you have to put up with doing this. If you, if you have any popularity or any following or you're successful, you know, like, I have people show up here and watch me, um, you know, th these streams regularly get, like, 10 to 15,000 view viewers, um, sometimes even more than that, and, uh, they're very successful, and, uh, my store is very successful, uh, my Patreon's successful, um, the other channels or, you know, whatever, but I post when I can. I'm not gonna... This whole thing now where people are, like, frantically posting to keep in the algorithm, I don't do that. I will never do that. I'm sorry, but I'm not putting out subpar videos just to keep in some fucking algorithm. I'm not doing it. Like, I absolutely will not even dream of doing something like that. So... Um, but if you're in this game, people are fucking, they will do anything they can to tear you down. You're, they, they'll, 
if you're anything they can grab onto, if you're fat, if you're ugly, if you're um, gay, if you're whatever, they can they can grab onto and use as an insult, and they do it. They they do it all the time. I see it all the time, and I think when I went through um, my whole period where I was depressed coming out of that was a there, it was a time where I was kind of just tr- trying to think was it like why why was I so sad that's what I was trying to think I was trying to think why was I so sad and I know why I was so sad but it took it, I didn't want to sit there and I mean li- listen when somebody says I have a friend right and she, like, grieved. For, like, two or three years, she grieved over a divorce. And I was, like, she would be, like, on oh, set. And I'm, like, still? I'm, like, Christ, it's been, like, three years. I didn't want to admit that that's what was going on with me. But it was. It was. It wasn't because, like... My... My... My bipolar disorder um, is is not something that they talk about the highs and the lows and stuff um, you know I take my medication I take it on time uh, you know I don't have a lot of these bouts that a lot of people suffer from where you get really depressed or whatever. I, I have two. I don't have number one. But um, mine is, I think, like mild. I don't think it's as bad as... Now, during my little grieving period, and it wasn't little, it was a long time. There were ups and downs, ups and downs, but it's this is how I really live my life. I feel good. I'm smiling. I'm happy working, getting around, having a good time. That's how I normally live. I feel now like I did three years ago. Normal. I just feel normal. But I went through a grieving period. I didn't know what was wrong. I thought, you know, I I wanted it to be something else other than me grieving a divorce. Does that make any sense to you? It, it sounds ridiculous. But to me, in my head, I would not allow that to be the reason. It had to be because of my bipolar disorder. It had to be uh, whatever. I was living alone or it had to be something. It had to be something other than what I wanted it to be. What I didn't want it to be. And coming out of it, I realized that was what it was. It was grief from being divorced. And um, it was grief. You know, you just get used to being with someone every day for 15 years and you, it's, you know, and things don't work out. And um, you start to drift apart or you have different interests or whatever. And um, And it was tough. It was really tough on me. It really was. But let me give you a word of advice. Don't do what I did. Don't talk about it. If you're ever, if you ever get to a position where you're in the public eye, don't talk about your problems. Because these people out there will use that information against you. And that is exactly what happened. Um... And people have still leech on to it. People still leech on to... And I talk about this at greater length on Patreon. Obviously, I got into a, a bit of a tussle. And I was talking about it with a, a good friend yesterday. Um, just keep all, all of your mental ailments to yourself. Because, you, honestly... Um, the pe- people will use it as gasoline to throw on a fire and to make you feel as 
rotten as they possibly can. Um, when I was in my, in the midst of grieving and being upset, and depressed, um, to see the things people wrote about me, uh, you know, <laughs> that was, uh, there was some really horrible stuff. And I hope those people, if they're watching now, uh, I hope you reimagine and rethink your life and, you know, perhaps maybe don't talk to somebody that way because I'm not just somebody on your computer screen or your phone or whatever. I'm a human being just like you are. I have feelings sometimes. Uh, I'm getting harder and harder to crack the feelings though because lately I just can't, like, I'm like thinking about selling comments like as art pieces. So I've gotten to a point where I just don't give a shit anymore <laughs> and will rather like just sell, you know, fucking, this guy's not going to be in front of me. Okay. Just sell fucking comments. Like, you know? But don't do it. Don't share anything personal. Don't talk about who you're dating. Don't talk about anything. That's the problem with today is that people use social media, especially like Facebook. I not Facebook. I'm just saying like people, a lot of people hop on lives just because they want someone to listen. You see it all the time on um, TikTok, which I don't really watch that much anymore. I used to, I was obsessed with TikTok for like three months. And you would, you would scroll through and come across some random, they stand by waiting to knock you down, Arizona Alchemy, absolutely. And they did, they did. Um, there were some incredible things that occurred um, in the last uh, seven, eight months. But I talk about more on Patreon. I'm not going to talk about it here because uh, it's just not worth it's not worth it. But um, y you know. It's it's amazing the things that people have said about me online and how completely, like, incorrect they are and how people read that shit and latch onto it like it's the truth. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why doesn't... Why don't these people who are, like, sitting at home just reading a situation that's not even... They're not even a part of... And reading into it and analyzing me as a human being. Um, I just realized that, like, a, like you know, there's a large portion of people who are just stupid. And really shouldn't have access to a computer. Like, if you're dumb, why are you on a computer? You should just be, like... licking a lollipop and sitting in a yard in a diaper or something. Like, why are you on a computer? If you're stupid, you shouldn't be on a computer. It's a waste of time and money. Electricity. Isn't it? Am I wrong? But these people really are dumb and they're... They sit and they wait and they remember shit. I could not believe the things that people were saying about me that were so complete, just utter bullshit. Um, and what do I do? There's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I can go and give them tons of attention by bringing it up and defending myself, but you defend yourself and then half the people think you're lying and the other half think you're being truthful, and thank God for the other half that thought I was truthful, that stuck by me on Patreon, and 
didn't buy into all the horse shit. Um, that was a tough time, but it's not going to happen again, I'll tell you that. It ain't going to happen again, because I will never be... I am extraordinarily careful now about who is around me. Um, I will never, ever, ever put someone front and center on my channel ever again. The only person that matters on this channel is the one whose name's on the fucking page, the front page. That's the only person that matters. Me. Not anyone else. So I'll never do that again. That's another lesson. That's another lesson. When you're making videos, you don't need to... You Listen. You want to make videos. People think, oh, I have to collaborate. I hear that word thrown, thrown around a lot, collab. Everyone's like, collab. Why don't you guys collab? I mean, collab is not a word, number one. Number two, collaborating with what? We both, like, how can you collaborate when you're both filming a video for your own channels? That's not a collaboration. A collaboration is you take this person's talent and this person's talent and you bring it together to show the two people their talent together a piece of one person and a piece of another person. People are like, oh my God, you're collabing. No, I'm live streaming with an asshole. I'm not collabing. I can collabing. Collab. It's not a fucking word. Stop saying collab. But I can't stand when people like like I'll be live streaming, right? With someone. Or like, you know, I'm in Adam like the woo. Adam the woo. Like I'm in his video, right? And people are like, oh my god, you're you're collaborating with... You're collabing with Adam the Woo. It's like, no, I'm not. We're hanging out. We're friends. Like, he's doing a video. We're hanging out. And we're friends. Jeez, Louise. Like, I'm not... We're not collabing. I'm not... I don't know. That's just another thing that drives me crazy. But you don't need to collab with anyone. Collaborate. You don't need to. Like, don't do it. That woman, she is so cute. This is black lady, and she's like all dialed up. I mean, she's real dialed up. And that Porsche pulled up there to turn his blinkers on. So I'm like, oh, but he's just picking her up. But she's like adorable. She's like running across the courtyard. She's like, I'm coming, I'm coming. She's so cute. Um. Anyway, you don't need to collaborate with more popular channels. It doesn't do anything. It really doesn't. Like, back in the day when I was, like, really kind of, like... I was just kind of, like, naive about... That boy looked like fucking Little Nas. Um, back in the day, I didn't know. So, like, I would, like, go and shoot videos with... Um, like, I'm trying to think of somebody who was popular at the time that I shot videos with. Um... I really enjoyed shooting videos with, um, proper people. And I've always, I have always been impressed with Brian and Michael. Um, even when they were like, I met them, they were like, what, 19 or something? I mean, they were just kids and I was just so impressed with their videos. I just said, my God, these two are really good at what they do. Um, it was almost like they tell a story about a place instead of just doing what everybody else was doing and they, they created this very slick package um, which is important if you're trying to grow like your channel and get people to come watch and everything um, but they they impressed me more than you know anyone 
that I was around. I can't remember who... Like, Josh, I mean, I think I shot with Josh one time, and it was just, like... I don't know where we were. We were going to this, like, mental hospital. And it was near, um... Williamsburg. And, uh... We went through the woods. It was proper people. Me... Josh and his friends who were every fucking person had a camera with a big light on it so they're all just filming each other I'm like what kind of video is this man um so I was kind of like not into it because I'm like why am I you know filming this video? <laughs> I'd rather just do a behind the scenes video of them filming a video um but we got to this creek and it was like a jump, we had to jump over it. And they're all like young with tennis shoes and shit and they're jumping over like it's nothing. And me, I'm like, God, I don't wanna fall. And I'm getting ready to jump over and they're all just facing the cameras at me. And I'm like, wait, I'm, it's almost like they're waiting for me to like fall or like fuck up or something like, oh, big, dumb, fat, stupid, dopey Dan, like, look at this. So I told everyone to turn their camera off or turn it around. And it just made me really uncomfortable, that, that one incident. I really just didn't... I wasn't feeling that very much. You know, it was almost like they were waiting. I'm not talking about Brian or Michael. It just seemed like everybody was just kind of, like, with the camera's face at me. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I don't want to be this person. Like, I think that's when I kind of backed off of hanging out with... Or doing videos with other people. Because I just... I was like, what's the point? You know, Josh's audience at that time, were they were just kids. They, they, were, they didn't want to watch me. They wanted to see Josh. You know, they wanted to watch him. And the, his audience was like 12, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids. And they were not interested in watching my shit because they're kids. They Josh was like a cartoon character at that time. You know, so... They wanted to watch him, and he, you know, kind of, I guess, fed into their their own kind of um, thing where, you know, they felt like they were exploring with him or going with him. Um, I did not know many adults that who watched Josh. Um, and Josh now, I don't, I mean, I haven't seen his channel in years, but he's doing more like ghost videos and demon videos and stuff now. Um, but yeah, back then, you know, going out with other people to film Adam, um, you know, just hanging out. He's just filming and I'm hanging out with him. It's not, that's not a collaboration. Carpetbagger who I was a big champion of Carpetbagger since when he was like 10,000 subs. I found him. He shot that incredible <laughs> abandoned yard sale. And I was obsessed with that video. I said, how wonderful, an abandoned yard sale. And he went up and was picking up items. It was literally a table. with It was overgrown with a mobile home. And he's going up and picking up stuff off this table, and it's little pieces of pottery, and it's filled with water. I mean, it was just incredible. It was just an incredible thing. And I loved his work, and um, I'm so glad to see where he is now. He really, uh, he really grew. I think the last time I looked at his channel, he was something like 400,000 or 500,000 people, so... But YouTube was so different back then. It was just a different place. Now, of course, Jake and I... Jake, I feel like we have, you know, definitely collaborated. Jake from Bright Sun Films. Um, and Brennan. Like, we have definitely collaborated, like, creatively. Like, Jake... Um, you know, it's just... 
it, it's it, it's those are two people who I have a lot of respect for as well. Um, I just uh, it's so weird to see people wearing jackets. It, is it really that it's seventy four? It's not that cold. Come on, people. Um, I just uh, when I started too, it was so weird being like kind of having your your like colleagues, I guess you would call them yellow light. Um, you know, they're like a bunch, like when I met Jake and Brandon, I mean, they were kids. They were like 19. Jake was like 18 or 19. And, uh, I started talking to Jake on the phone and we had such great phone conversations. We would talk about malls and all this stuff. And he was really, really interesting. And, um, I met them. The first time I met them was in Detroit. Uh, Brennan and Jake came down to hang out with us and it was so much fun to to meet them and um, now they're like my my sons Jake and Brent my sons but um, who else does anybody else remember who I might have you know Grim Life Collective. I, that channel is weird to me. I don't understand, like, that channel at all. I mean, I know that they're, like, big horror fans. The only reason I know about them is because I saw the Shelley Duvall. Like, they're basically, like, tonguing her ass because they're such huge fans of her or whatever. Um, but, like... I don't know. I don't want to say anything, but his girlfriend is very, she's a very strange woman. I don't know what's wrong with her. Um, but I can't, I just cannot watch that. <laughs> I just can't watch it. I think his girlfriend is very odd. Like there's something going on there. But I started watching and I said, what in the hell's wrong with his girlfriend? And um, I just said, I'm not watching this shit. We're like, oh, let's go check out the filming locations for Poltergeist 3. I'm like, goodbye, bye, see you later. But the Shelley Duvall interview was quite interesting and pretty well done, I think. Um, but it's on a channel I would stick around in. No. Not my kind of shit. Not my kind of shit at all. Man, everyone's at the bar. I want to go to that. Oh, um, Colin and Peyton, yeah. Who is Anton? Anton became obsessed with money. Who's Anton? Anton. I don't know who Anton is. God, I look like the Hulk with the fucking green light. Oh. Oh, there he's like some Detroit Urbexer or whatever. I mean, listen guys, like the thing that like okay. And this is another thing that's really, I don't understand. I've never understood this. But like, there's this weird like thing that people think like if you're on YouTube, you shouldn't, or if you're an artist, that you should not be trying to earn a living. That is ridiculous, okay? I, listen. People hustle. They gotta hustle. We, I have to hustle. I can't just sit around. Um, I can't keep my mouth shut. You know, I gotta sell. I gotta sell my website. I gotta sell my videos. I gotta sell pictures. I gotta sell Patreon subscriptions. I gotta sell everything. Um, and it's a hustle. 
Um, it's not easy. There's times where I'm just like, oh, I hate saying this again. Or uh, when I post like links to my um, website, I'm like, oh God, people are going to be like, oh, you fucking greedy pig. But it's ridiculous that I have to feel that way. Um, because why do people think I'm doing this? Do people think I'm doing this, uh, what is some side job or hobby or something? This is my fucking life. This is what I do for a living. Um, I work very hard. Um, you know, I am not ashamed, uh, to (laughs) make money. I make money doing what I do. I work very hard. Um, it is ridiculous. This this attitude today that people shouldn't be making that that they shouldn't have um, am I going the wrong way? Oh I am, shit, I'm sorry fuck, well this is the alley next to my building so I always see people turn here um but I had people who will like write me a message like like, get a job and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, if you had this job for a week, you would be, like, you would you would quit and want to go get something easy. This is not an easy job. It's a very difficult job. It's not a, it's not a cushy job either. It's a difficult fucking job. Um, you know, I'm always trying to grow. I'm always trying to sell. I'm always trying to do what I got to do to make my rent. So, um... When people say, oh, this person became obsessed with making money. Well, that's what we all do. Who isn't obsessed with trying to make money? They're, everyone's obsessed with making money. Everyone. Just because they're creative, don't give them shit because they were trying to make money. They're trying to make money. You know? Artists make money. You know? I'm, for, I'm, I'm like a fucking idiot. I mean, I can... You know, I'm, I'm selling fucking Polaroids for $42. I mean, that's fucking insane. But that's just how, you know, how things have, have, uh, have come about. Um, but there is this weird, very, very strange, um, idea that because because you are uh, an artist that you should be poor and starving and you, should, you know people people there were there was you know you didn't see anyone fighting or talking shit back when YouTube was just uh, like uh, uh, what was that idiot Renetto that guy with the Mentos and the diet soda um, you know and no one got paid back then Everyone's like, oh, I got 20 million views on my videos. Like, who cares? You don't make any money off of it. Renato. I will never forget. The only reason that I know who Renato is, I will tell you. I joined YouTube in 2006. When it first, it was like the first couple weeks. And I joined up at This Is Dan Bell, I think. No. It was Movie Dan or something originally. And so at the time, the people who were getting popular was like, um, Brunetto was this bald hair, bald headed, middle aged father in Ohio. The only reason I remember Ohio, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, and there was, uh, there was, uh, um, Onision and uh, this woman who used to do kid videos and just a weird place. I mean, it was a very weird place. Who's Renetto? Look it up. You'll see. But anyway, the reason I know about Renetto, I went to <clears throat> uh, Cleveland or since... No, I went to Columbus, Ohio. I had just gotten braces. So this was like in 2008, maybe, I don't remember when I got braces, but I was an adult when I got braces, and, um, my fucking teeth and gums hurt so fucking bad 
that I was like in tears. I was like, oh my god, it like was miserable. Um, so we, I, we had to go to Columbus for some reason. I don't remember what the reason. It, it was my my ex husband's job. He had to go there and do something, and I went with him. And we were we went to this Italian restaurant. It was like the best Italian restaurant in town. And across the street, on a window, I see Renato's bald head, like his. It's like this bald head and then it said YouTube and I'm like what the fuck is that and it was a shop he had a shop like a candle shop or something um and I thought that's bizarre but <laughs> that was the times I mean but back then when you were a YouTuber like nobody made money so there was no arguments about you know it was a hobby for everyone and then as soon as everyone started getting paid then everyone, the, the attitude changed. YouTube's not a real job. Being an artist is not a real job. Um, it, it's sad. And the people bitching about it, I probably make ten times the amount of money they make every year. Um, honestly. So, it's, it's just so, it's just more bullshit, jealousy, fucking crap. And they'll throw it at you and make you feel bad and that's what everyone does these days. It's just, let's just destroy everything. If he's not going to do this, then we'll burn it down. That's what they do. What can you do? Except cry. I'm going to cry. I've been all over the place tonight with this fucking live stream. I don't know. Jesus. What have we talked about? Does anyone have any, um... Does anyone have... Has anyone have the minutes? So we can see what I've been discussing all night. Does anyone do minutes here? <laughs> I want to know. I want to see the minutes. Uh, have I tried getting into Crownsville Hospital? No. A long time ago I did. Um, a long time ago I tried, but, uh, they have security out the ass there. But then, uh, a friend of mine, this, I actually have been in there. A friend of mine, uh, was making a low budget, like, horror movie. Um, he was working on it. He wasn't making, I mean, he was like one of the producers or something on it. And he knew we grew up down there, so he knew that I always wanted to go in there and check it out. So he called me and said, come on over to the hospital. Um, I have keys and we're done for the day. And I was like, fucking awesome. So we went down and got in. You know, it was a really fucking crazy hospital. It was Springfield. Springfield Hospital which is partially, I believe, parts of it are still in operation, and then there's other other sections of it that are abandoned. Um, I went there, uh, let's see, I went with Scott, and it was like, was I YouTubing then? I can't remember. Probably not. But we we went to this sort of abandoned area of the place, and it had a had a door open to this building, and it was so fucking weird inside. It was just creepy. Um, somebody had one of the patients or somebody had done this scene, they painted this scene on the wall, and the fucking people look like aliens, and it was so fun, I was like, what the fuck is that, I mean, it was creepy, really creepy stuff, and, um, I've looked for videos to see if anyone has ever seen that, I, I haven't found anything, because I don't know what the security is like up there anymore, but, that's one place I have not been back to, because it's just, 
it's just one of those places where if you're like driving around looking they know that you're there you're not there for official business so they will pull you over and tell you to leave they have all these like uh rent cops in, in security vehicles driving around. Um, Rosewood. I used to go to Rosewood a lot. That was back when uh, we had access to it. We used to be able to get in. We had like actual permissions. So we, we explored the entire place. Um... I did a, um, one time, I did a, uh, 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 overnight at Eastern State Penitentiary, the one in Philadelphia, the big prison in Philadelphia, uh, I think that's what it's called, Eastern Penitentiary, that's, I think that's what it's called, so a friend of mine had gotten, uh, they were like ghost people, and they got an overnight there, and they said, do you want to come up and hang out? And I said, sure. So I went up there, and, um, it was after midnight, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go walk around by myself, and, um, I walked and, uh, went to death row, and you can't even, it's so weird in there, you can't hear the city. You can't hear Philadelphia anywhere. And, um, you, you can't hear the city from those walls. It's very strange. It's very quiet in there. And I went into death row and I just sat there. And I'm like, come on, fucking do something. I want to see ghosts and all this shit. And, uh, I sat there for like half an hour. And then uh, I heard a footstep. Or some kind of a shuffle. And I said, oh my god. And then I look and I see a shadow standing in the doorway of the, of the thing. And I just went, oh my god. And it was this fucking guy who was part of the group. He was just fucking around with me. But, um... He was standing in the doorway, and I couldn't, you couldn't see, it just looked like a shadow, and he was wearing dark clothes, it scared the living shit out of me, oh my god, I like, I was like, <gasps> there's a ghost, they finally listened to me, and then it wasn't a ghost, it was just this dude, I thought that was funny, but, he was like, how long have you been sitting in here, and I was like, I, half an hour, 45 minutes, he's like, you do this by yourself, and I was like, I said, what, what's gonna happen? I said, what could possibly happen? A ghost, like, takes advantage of me? I mean, that's about it. That's about all that could, could occur. Um, I did an overnight at Moundsville Prison, which that place really creeped me. That place is far creepier than Eastern Penn. Moundsville Prison in West Virginia is fucking scary. I will never forget that place. I went with my sister. Um, we were there with... Uh... I used to get invited by this ghost group because I always had the money to go. So they would always call me because I'd always say, oh yeah, we'll do it. Because um, they always had some member flake out. But I think like Moundsville is like a hundred bucks for my sister and I to go. And we got there and... Um... there's this uh, section of the prison called the Sugar Shack. It's downstairs in the basement, and it's basically like a rec room that they built for the prisoners. And when I went down there, I was... We were walking around, and I said, look at that... that they On the wall, there was like this like painting of a ghost... And I said, that looks like it's from that MTV show. I was like, doesn't it? I was like, remember that MTV show? And they would, like, have to do, like... They would have to go sit somewhere for, like, an hour. And blah, blah, blah. And, um... 
then the guy, the tour guide or the host or whatever, he's like, oh, that's from the show, the MTV show. I think it was called Fear. And uh, he was like, you know, that they they filmed here. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Um, Because I think on the show Fear, they called the place something else. I don't think it was called Moundsville. But that Sugar Shack room, the guy, the host said to me, I said, "I, I don't think there's ghosts here. And he said, well, go sit in the sugar shack by yourself. He's like, if you can make it 10 minutes, um, he's like, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll forgive you. And I was like, okay. So we went down there and you had to walk. You had to go out the back of the building and then down in a cellar. It was like, uh, steps that went down into a cellar. And then there was a room and a hallway, and then you go into the sugar shack. And I walked all the way down there with a flashlight, and there's a chair in there, so I sat down on the chair and turned the flashlight off. And that place had some feels to it, and I I started to get really freaked out, and I did not make it to 10 minutes. I had to get up and get out. I, it was just, like, so uncomfortable. Um... I don't know why, it just felt really uncomfortable in there, and, um, they're talking about people were raped, the prisoners were raped and murdered in there, which happens in every prison, I mean, it doesn't matter what prison you go to, they've always had a rape and a murder, um, but that room just had some really dark energy to it, and, uh, I went back to Moundsville back in 26. 16, I believe, 2018, maybe, when did I go, I was in Wheeling, I was by myself, nobody was with me, and I went to Moundsville, and then I kept going south, but nobody was there with me, so where did I go, I can't remember, um, Moundsville, I stopped there in the daytime. I went to Moundsville in the daytime. Okay? And uh, the lady, uh, when I got to the front, she's like, oh, the next tour starts and whatever. And I said, listen, can I just pay to walk around on my own? I don't want to go on the tour. I said, I've already been on the tour. I said, I did an overnight here. I said, I just want to go and film my, by myself. And um, she called over to the office, and the lady, the manager, said I could. So they charged me by the hour. I forget what it was, like 50 bucks or something. And the sugar shack couldn't go down there. It was closed. But I went upstairs in Moundsville uh, in the daytime to the medical wing. And there were still operating tables and all kinds of stuff up there so they they wouldn't take the patients out of there they would they would actually operate uh on the prisoners they wouldn't take the prisoners to a hospital in wheeling they would operate on them right in Moundsville prison and um i swear to god uh i walked i went up these stairs got to a door that led down the 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 um corridor of the hospital or the medical wing um I was going in the rooms filming I came out of a room and I looked over at the door that was pretty far away and I saw someone step back from the doorway back to where the stairs would have been and I just saw it like it was so fast and um it scared me man I was like what the fuck um it just creeped me out and I said hello and nobody responded anything because they were doing tours downstairs so I thought maybe somebody came up the steps um 
whatever, you know, got off the tour, which, which is what I always do if I go on a tour, I'm like, let's split and go up this hallway or something, um, so I went, film medical, film, by the way, this card, the cards for this were all lost, they were in a shell, a card shell, and, uh, I was with the proper people, and I found it in my trunk, and I said, oh my god, it's that thing, and it, it had, oh my god, it had so many good videos, there were like ten videos on these fucking cards, I took them upstairs, put them on my desk, had two people over, one person, uh, I didn't exactly trust the other person I trusted with my life. Uh, and the shell suddenly disappeared. The person who I didn't exactly trust said they didn't take it. I still to this day don't believe them because all they did when I knew them was lie. So, um, so anyway, the cards disappeared. Um, but I continued to film. I went downstairs. I was in the, in the prison section where the showers were and the thing and I'm filming and it's quiet, dead quiet. And all of a sudden this man with a fucking beard comes walking around the corner, scared me to like, I literally was like, Oh my God. And, um, He's like, oh, sorry, man. He was like the maintenance guy or something. And he's like, oh, yeah, I saw you upstairs in medical. I was like, that was you? He's like, yeah, I saw you, so I didn't want to disturb you. And I said, I said, hello, didn't you hear me? And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, my God. So it wasn't a ghost. But it was still, that was, a, that was even in the daytime, that place is fucking creepy as shit. Now, the creepiest place that I've been, um, would have to be Point Lookout Lighthouse, I think is probably the creepiest place I've, I've ever explored, or been to, I, there's nothing to explore, it's just a tiny duplex, but, that is a haunted house, That is a haunted house. You can say whatever you want about Point Lookout, but that place is fucking. That lighthouse is haunted. I think I told the story last week. Did I tell it on the. I did. I told the story last Saturday when I was driving to Virginia about my experience at Point Lookout Lighthouse with the. Uh, did I, I did tell this story. The, okay, so let me, I'll just briefly what happened. Um, I was sort of moonlighting at the time. I was looking for a group of people to film for a ghost uh, group to film for a documentary. I wanted to find the most like ragtag team of people and just do a documentary about them being ghost hunters. And I found these people and they were excellent. But anyway, they ended up kind of getting, I wasn't, the, the whole, the whole purpose wasn't to embarrass them or make fun of them. Um, it was just a story about, like, American people, like, simple American people who are into ghosts, and they, I just wanted colorful characters, and they, they just didn't, I don't know, but anyway, I met this guy there, who's was a cop, Chris, and, um, he, uh, we, I don't remember exactly how we got tickets or whatever to go down there, but we went down to the Point Lookout Lighthouse to go in and do a ghost hunt. And, um, this is a very kind of remote place. The southernmost tip of Maryland it is creepy down there. Um... 
Neil wants me to go to the park. Okay, we can go. Whatever. Um... What time is it? It's almost 1 o'clock. I took Mama out at 8.30. She's fine. Um... So, uh... Chris... Chris and I, um... Drove down there together. He was not... Didn't have much personality. I don't remember his last name. Uh, he was a Maryland State Trooper. <laughs> and literally had the personality of like I mean I don't even know what to say he nice guy no personality at all but we had a common interest in the ghost thing and whatever so we went down to this lighthouse a place that I had dreamed about getting into since I was a child because when I was a kid I read uh, a book. I think it was Hans Holzer or Daniel Cohen or Arthur C. Clarke. One of the three. I can't remember which one. And they wrote about the lighthouse. Um, there's a famous photo uh, inside the lighthouse of a. It appears to look like a Civil War soldier leaning up against the wall behind this woman who was a resident. Oh, God damn this thing. Sorry, guys. I don't know where I got stuck here, so I don't know where I was talking. But anyway. Um, I read a lot of books when I was a kid. So the book that I read was had a whole story in it about Point Lookout. Point Lookout was, was a Confederate prison camp during the Civil War. Uh, mosquitoes, a lot of bug-borne illnesses, mosquitoes, a lot of people died there, there are mass graves, the lighthouse was used as a hospital, um, so a lot of very violent history was at this place. The lighthouse has always been reported to be haunted, um, I met the woman who lived there for, she was a caretaker there at the lighthouse, and I cannot remember her name, but I met her, and she told me about living there, and I was like, I don't know how the fuck this woman could live in that place by herself, but then I look at me, and I'm like, well, I live in a haunted building too by myself, so I get, you really do get used to it, you just kind of, you, you kind of, like, sometimes I will feel very uncomfortable in my apartment, it'll be like when I'm trying to go to bed, or, you know, whatever, um, and I think that that's, like, a presence, and there's other times where I'm not uncomfortable, I'm fine, but my apartment, there's still, I hear noise, it's not really, you know, it's, it is what it is, oh, excuse me, oh, God, excuse me, um, are we all still here? Yeah, we can still see you guys. Um, anywho, uh, Chris and I went to the lighthouse and we were upstairs and it was nobody else in the house. It was just us. And we both had, um, those Sony digital recorders, they were pieces of shit, um, the sound quality is so bad on those fucking things, but that's what everybody was using, either those or Olympus, and you would record stuff and hear voices and stuff, it was weird, but, um, this occasion, we were standing upstairs, it was probably the three in the morning, and we're standing there. And, uh, we're in, we're in a, there's a hallway in front of us with a stairwell that goes down. And we're in the doorway of a small bedroom. And all of a sudden, we hear 
we kept, first of all, we kept seeing, hold on, what is, oh yeah, AJ Vantage, I did tell this story, I've told this story a few times, I looked down where the, where the stairwell was, there's a door there, it was an opening, because it, it's a stairwell that goes off to the, If so if we were facing it, it would be off to the left, I kept seeing what looked like someone tipping their head back and looking at us, like they were sitting on the step, and then they would tip back and peek their head around to look at us at the standing in the doorway. It was it was dark like a shadow, but it was moving very fast, like almost like kind of frantically moving. And um, I told Chris, I said, "Do you see that? Do you see what I'm talking about?" Because I thought maybe I was imagining, you know, imagining seeing this or whatever is this you, you know your eyes are in the dark so you're kind of and chris said no i see it. i see what you're talking about and i i just said what does it look like and he said it looks like a like a um what did he say it looked like he said it looked like smoke in in fast forward and i said that, that's basically what it is um all of a sudden we hear a woman humming this is a true story. I never made this up or anything. This is not like a lie. This is a true fucking story. Heard a woman humming. She hummed two verses. Like, it, it only lasted for, it was very faint. It lasted for about 15 to 17, 18 seconds. We were just standing there in stunned silence. And I finally said, Chris, did you hear that? And he's like, oh, yeah. And um, to this day, I have no explanation. For We both got that voice or that humming on the recorders that we had. To this day, I have no idea what that was. I don't know if it... Uh, I don't know where it came from. It was definitely not somebody outside. It was a uh, cool... I think it was a... It was winter. It was winter time. And there was nobody down at the point. So there was no fishermen. There was nothing out there. It was the middle of the night. Um, our host was sitting in her car outside um, to keep warm because there was no heat inside the house. Um... I don't know. To this day, I don't know um, what that was. That was the weirdest thing I have ever... Except for the lights at Fort Mifflin, which I told this story last week. I don't want to tell it again. I'm going to tell one story. Neil, if Neil's still watching, he wanted to hear about the Bog Pedo story, which is a pretty creepy story. So I'll tell... The Bog Pedo story. Let me just see. I'd be so gone. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it didn't scare me. I just was... It, I wasn't scared. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, where is that coming from? It sounded like, like an old radio or something. It was just so fucking weird. We, you know, we, we had flashlights, we're looking everywhere for some, something that could have made that noise, and to this day, I don't even know, I don't know, I have no idea, um, I have no idea where, where, what happened, where it came from, if it came from another dimension, if it was a ghost, I have no idea. Um, another story that I'm going to tell, and this is for Neil. Neil left me a super chat very, like, hours ago, but I never told this story, but I'm going to tell it right now. Uh, I've told this story so many times, so if you've heard it already, I apologize. Um, but I'm going to, uh, um, let me see. Somebody said, uh, uh, wolf tail wagger. Planted speaker seems to be the only logical explanation. Other than that, sounds ghostly to me. We, there was no planted speaker. <laughs> there was no... It wasn't... It, 
the sound was right in front of us. Like it was, it didn't come from a place. It was just in a space right in front of us. It was so weird. It just was. And the the thing, the damn thing is, is that there was a there's a frame on the wall with a with a thing that says, "People commonly hear a woman singing in this area." Um, so I told Robert, who, I don't know if he's still in charge of the lighthouse. I don't know if he's still in charge. He, Robert, um, I think his name is Robert. No, I know his name is Robert. I just, he, um, is the president of the Friends of the Lighthouse. So he's the one who really spearheaded and got the lighthouse restored. Um, I told him about that and he, he was like, he said he had never heard singing there, but, um, I heard the singing. I mean, it wasn't singing. It was more, it was humming. It wasn't singing, but, um, all those times we went to Gettysburg and I stayed at the fucking, you know, Farnsworth house and the General Wayne Inn or the, the, what, what, no, no, no. Um, what is that place called? Cash Town Inn. All these places that were supposed to be so haunted. Never had one experience in Gettysburg. Years of going there. And I have never had a ghostly experience except for one thing that happened. We were, I was there with this couple that I stopped hanging out with because, oh my God. The, I was hanging out with this couple. They were kind of like trashy or whatever. Um, but they were like ghost people. So they were always good to meet up. Because I don't want to go go something by myself. It's creepy. So they only live like 10 minutes from Gettysburg. So they would come meet me. But anyway, one I don't know how we got on the discussion. But... Um, Oh, um, that, that's, okay, so I had been over to Poland, and I went to Auschwitz, and I had come back, I was going, I went all through Europe at that time, so I came home, and decided, I was, like, bored a week later, and I'm like, let's go to Gettysburg, because I hadn't been in a long time, and then at some point in the discussion, we, I was like, oh yeah, I went to Poland and Auschwitz, and he is like, that is the biggest lie. And I was like, what? And he's like, there is no way they executed six million Jews. That's in, that's impossible. Never happened. I never spoke to them again after that. <laughs> I was like, nope. If you're a Holocaust denier, I we can't be friends. I never, never spoke to them again after that. But I was with them one night. And we were behind the middle school, in the woods behind the middle school. It was after hours, so the park was closed. And we heard a horn, one blow of a horn come from a bush that was like 10 feet away from us. That's it. We all said, oh, that sounded like a trumpet. And it did, but that was it, that was all there was to it, so, I, um, I just, uh, that was the only experience I think I've ever had at Gettysburg, I don't recall ever having, there was one night, This is when the park used to be open till midnight. The park at one time the battlefield was open until midnight. So you could go and ha- like if you were there in in the when the clocks changed you you would have 6 hours of, di- of uh dark to explore the park and everything. And so it was just full of ghost hunters at that time, but I went out there with my friend, and I was so tired. When we got there, I was just like, oh, I'm so fucking tired. And we were down in Triangular Field, which if you're familiar with the battlefield there, um, Triangular Field is behind Devil's Den. 
it's sort of uh, Devil's Den, Little Round Top, and then at the bottom is Devil's Den. And then behind that is, is uh, Triangular Field. And um, it's like where the most bloody battle happened. And there's also a very famous video, a ghost video, of what looks like a line of soldiers walking into the woods and disappearing. And there's like, there's like this country guy like, you let me see it? And the woman's like, what is that? And he's like, there they go. Um, it's on YouTube. It's a, it's a fascinating video. I, I don't, they obviously did not fake the video. Um, if it is, it some, you know, they were trying to say, they were trying to say that it could have been cars, but I know where they filmed it. And there's no way that if you know where they filmed it, these figures are walking up in the air. They're not walking up a hill. Anyway, I went to the rock where the figures were. <laughs> we went to that rock and we were just sitting there and I think I was smoking a cigarette or something and then I my friend just we're just looking at the stars it's so nice out and beautiful and I laid back and lay in my head and I just fell asleep I like totally fell asleep and um <laughs> uh I guess it was an hour maybe more my friend finally woke me up he's like Dan get up he's like you're you're like snoring and I'm like damn and I had fallen asleep, completely fall, fell asleep in the triangular field on a rock where they had filmed this ghost video um and uh we hiked back up to the car I said I want to go home I'm so tired we, it was like 11 o'clock at night. We hiked back up to the car. I don't even know why I'm telling this story. Because it has nothing to do with ghosts. I got home. And was fucking covered with ticks. I had ticks. All over me. Uh, legs. My dick. My stomach. My back. My hair. They were everywhere. Because um, I had slept on that rock. And they were there's deer you know they're all over the place up there so I'm like a warm mammal so they come over and start feeding on me these ticks were all over me I mean they were like literally everywhere and uh I had been up there before and laid down on a rock and I had a goddamn tick burrow into my skin on my back and I I didn't even notice it for um forever and uh had to get that goddamn thing out ugh it was horrible it was like a scab with like a tick stuck in it it was so fucking gross but somehow I have not gotten any t uh tick born illnesses I don't Every time I get a physical, I always get tested for um, Lyme's disease, but the Lyme's test isn't very good because it only works if you actually, I don't even think it, sometimes it doesn't even work if you're Lyme positive. So it's a very, um, it's a very wonky test, but generally speaking now, I don't go to the woods because I don't want to be covered with ticks. I'll stay on roads and trails. I'm not fucking hiking through like the video where I was hiking through the woods uh or in through the brush out in West Baltimore where we were tonight different because there's no deer there so I know if I hike through those bushes there's not going to be any ticks here I wouldn't go through the bushes there's there's deer in this park so there's ticks everywhere um I don't want no ticks. No ticks. Let's go see what the, uh... oh shit. I want to tell, well, I'll tell the story when we get down here. I gotta fucking pee again. Oh 
Okay, there's, I don't think there's anybody down here, so. I will have a quiet place to urinate. Here we are. Again. At the park. Where the men cruise. Looking for love in all the wrong places. That is exactly what they do up here. I don't think they're looking for love, though. They're just looking for a dick. Like, these cars here are totally sus. I'm telling you right now. Totally sus. There's no one in that one. So he went off walking somewhere. There's nobody. No, there's someone in that one. Never mind. No. There's a lot of cars here. What am I going to do? Fuck. I guess I'll just turn around. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Turn around. Is that possible here? Oh my god. Man, this is. This place is the dick of death. You don't want to go fucking around up here. Right, I'm just going to go up here and turn around. Like I always do. See. This would be a lousy spot to get caught by police because then they're like automatically going to be like, what are you, they already know what you're doing up here. They're like, oh, he's up here looking for a bonding moment with another man. But yeah, this park is famous for its um, same-sex cruising uh, nightly show that happens here all the time. They're always here. And it's mostly like married men, like married to women who are up here. They just want to get some... guys aren't in their truck vehicles. Like, where the fuck are they? You know, walking around. Oh, where's him? Don't, you don't need to turn around, dude. I have got to piss again. And I really want to do it. I'm going to do it right here. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. There we go. I did not want the interior lights to come on. Is there any way to shut them off too? No. <gasps> That's how you do it. Unbelievable. Okay. 
sorry. Oh my God, come on, man. is like not charging okay well now that we're in the dick park I guess this would be a good time to tell my story about my near abduction Oh, can we get 200 likes? Come on, guys. 200 likes. Like, if you want, get me to a thousand likes and I'll tell the goddamn story. But everyone watching, there's 700 of you now. I'm sorry, there's suddenly 800 of you now. Can you press the like key, please, and get this fucking thing to go up? How does the viewership just rise suddenly to a hundred people? Like, this thing's been fucking... Oh, my God. Excuse me. Hi. Why are the lights so bright behind me? I'm... Look. It looks like Silkwood. Remember Meryl Streep? She's like... When they're getting ready to kill her. Oh, my God. What... What, what are these lights? Dude. Like, fucking motherfuck, turn the fucking lights off. Damn. I mean, what is he, search and rescue? Like, queen? If you want dick, you need to turn the lights off. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Ba babies, we're at 824. We need to do better than that. We need 100. 175. 76. Likes. 176 people need to just like the video. It's so simple. Like the video. Right now. Like, 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 like. Okay, we're going up again. 833. We can do better than this. We can do better than this. You can do better than this. Um, 8.39, we're stuck there for some reason. I don't know why. Let's see what, uh, what this, uh, alien, alien train. Hey, Dan. You and Josh and his friends were at a dead mall, not a forest. Um, yeah, that's true, but um, we we did go to the mental hospital together, but the video never got made because we couldn't get into the mental hospital, and then security showed up at the mental hospital. We, dr we went back to the woods, went back to our vehicles, I drove back to the front of the mental hospital and just drove in to see if we could try something that way. And then the fucking, um, oh, it's that guy. Okay. Now I know why you got the lights on. I get it. Um, we drove in and this fucking prick security guard pulled me over and was like reading me the riot act about driving onto the property and I I got really irritated with this guy and I said are you actual law enforcement I was like because if you're not I'm leaving well it turns out that he did have actual law enforcement <laughs> abilities and he wrote me a ticket I believe I, th I think I got a ticket for like a hundred bucks or something. He was a nasty piece of work. Because he was there and then he... Some other guy pulled up. Because sometimes you go to these places and... 
it's some douchebag who is has no law enforcement authority whatsoever and they're yelling at you and it's like you don't have to sit there and listen to that you just leave so i was like well if he doesn't have any law enforcement uh, authority i'm just gonna leave because i'm not gonna sit here and be verbally harassed or verbally assaulted by this asshole and sure enough he was actual police so pretty pretty badass but um the bog story for Neil. This was about... I was... Pr my parents separated for a little bit back in the day, in the 80s. And uh, my mother um, moved... We moved out to a small home house uh, not too far from my father's, where my father was staying. Just maybe five minutes, so close. Um, we, we, um, uh, I'm sorry, I just lost my concentration because there are people over here. There we go. Um, what was I going to say? I think it's so weird when people come here together. Like these two guys. They're two. What the fuck was that? It sounded like a dinosaur. Like guys come here together and shit. That's so weird. Or maybe they met up here, like... Why would you meet here? Why wouldn't you go to a motel? Or a hotel? I guess if it's a cheap date, you just go to the woods. <laughs> you just lean over, bend over at a tree, in an oak tree. <laughs> My friends found this nasty fucking video of... These dudes fucking here. Um... It's on like Xtube or something or X videos. Uh, he sent it to me. He's like, this has got to be Druid Hill. And it's like a guy. I can't believe I'm telling this story. It's a guy getting banged and he's not clean. So there is some can you guys hear me? Okay. Ugh. My back. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. I hope the phone is still charging. Okay. Anyway, um... I'll save that story for later. That's a Patreon story. Um... Neil, Countess, I'm at the park, the cruising park, where men come to play, and apparently, um, there is this, I, how do you pick somebody up here when you can't see them? You don't know anything about them. Like, what do you do? Like, go up and... Like, in the dark. Like, hey, how you doing? Like, it was so fucking weird. And, like, what's really freaky about this place is the guys are all, like, DL. They're all, like, down low. So they all wear masks. They wear, like, ski masks. So you can't... So they can't be identified. And, um... Like, what kind of scene is that? It's so fucking crazy. Like guys in ski masks sucking each other's dicks. <laughs> oh. But I have never, that is the truth, I have never played here before. Ever. I've never played up here. I would never, there's, it's too scary. It's, it's, it's fucking creepy ass place. 
but I don't judge anyone because it's their thing. Like, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I'm not going to judge. Everybody's like, well, if it's not in a bedroom with a man and a woman, it's fucking sick. And it's like, oh, come on. It's 2023. Can't I marry my own dog? <laughs> oh, great. The BMW dude who is literally... There's the lights again. Holy shit. Yes, please leave. Thank you. I saw you looking. Don't, please don't park in front of me now. This guy is like... He parked right behind me and was standing out there and then he walked over here to look in the window and um, I'm just not paying attention to him but I, I don't know how you... Like, I don't even know what he looks like. I can't see him. It's dark. But this park's fun, though. If you want to be, like, scared, like, it is fun. Oh, my God. That... Okay, so one of the creepiest stories that happened here at this park... Um, I don't remember when this was. It was, like four years ago maybe it was before the podcast started because I was hanging out with Jesse section 8 the drag performer and we, we had been somewhere he was dressed up in this like he looked like a fucking ratchet ass mess so I don't know if we were out at a bar if he, were, he was probably performing if he was dressed up but we ended up hanging out afterward and um I had a case of beer at the house, so I said, let's go get the beer and go up to Druid Hill Park, because it was a warm night, it was beautiful out, and uh, we come up here, and uh, we're down at the pavilion over here, and it's just too many people, it's, and like, they think, like, Jesse is there to, like, get it on, like, he's trans or something, and I'm like, no, 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 that's not it at all, so I said, let's go to the other pavilion, which is up the other side of the park a little more of a desolate area so we go up there and we're sitting out drinking beer and um i uh looked up we've been there probably an hour with smoking cigarettes and drinking and you know just chilling is that a person that is a person that's really creepy Can you see the person? No, there's no way not in this stream because they are in the light, but I don't know. Anywho, um, we're sitting there, it's dark, it's a dark night. It's not like, there's no moon, there's no clouds, so it's just dark out. And I look up and I see a shadow next to the tree. Uh, there's an oak tree behind us. And there's just a, a man standing there. And he's wearing a mask. And he has on all black clothes. And he is just standing there looking at us. And, um... I said, Jesse, look. And Jesse turned around and was like, what the fuck? And I... I stood up and I said, hey, how you doing? And... The guy said nothing, and I said, hello, can you hear me? And he said nothing. He just stood there, and that's when I, like, my fucking blood ran cold. I'm like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. If he had said hi or whatever, how you doing, I would have been fine, but he was like fucking son of Sam. He wasn't saying a word. I'm like, we're getting out of here now. Or the, the not son of Sam, but the other, the, what's his name, Zodiac Killer. Um... Man, I just threw the shit in a bag and jumped in the truck. And I'm like, let's get the fuck... I'm like, I've never... I, what I should have done is backed up and ran him over, but... It was just some fu like some fucking fruitcake trying to be cute. But, I mean, it was really scary. 
Like, I was convinced that we were going to be shot at any minute. And I was like, is he going to mug us? Is he, you know, what is he doing? And, um... You know, he's... Uh, he's just standing there in the dark, not saying a word. It, like, freaked me the fuck out. But all I have are memories of this park are good times. We have always come up here and partied at night and never had any problems with anyone. That one night we came up here and it was with my friend Skylar. God rest her soul. She was this incredible trans woman who I was friends with for a while. She was so great. Um, hilarious. I mean, so funny. You would, she just would say the most ridiculous things and you would laugh. I would just, I would laugh so hard. I would piss myself and we loved getting together and drinking. That was our thing. We'd just drink together and have a good time. And we would come up here all the time. Uh, and people were just, she was one of those people who are just like, People are naturally attracted to her because of her personality. They're just, everyone wants to talk, be her friend and talk to her because she's so fucking hilarious. And, um, we, uh, sat out there drinking beer and, um, or no, we didn't have beer. We had, she mixed some fucking drink. I can't remember what it was. It was good, but it was like, I was like plastered. And, um, these guys, uh, they were a couple and they came over to talk to us and they're like, what are you guys doing here? Just having fun. And we're like, yeah, we're just drinking and, you know, hanging out. And, um, the guys, uh, were having an, an argument or a fight and they, uh, Eventually, it got to a point where they're, the one guy's like, my dick is bigger than yours, and blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, Skylar was like, pull him out, and we'll judge. So they did. They both pulled their units out, and I was like, oh, my God. And to me, they both looked the same. And Skylar said that the one looked a little bit bigger, but I, I thought they looked the same. I was just like, they looked the same to me. Um, what a great memory. <laughs> a wonderful memory of us judging penis size in a fucking park in Baltimore in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh my god. And people, like, like this is the, the thing about my life in Baltimore. Baltimore, you really, really have to have a sense of humor to survive here. You can't survive here unless you find this the things that happen here amusing and funny um if you have a sense of humor you'll survive and you'll be fine and everything will be good um if you don't those are the people that leave or can't stand it and I totally get it but uh I'm just sorry guys I'm just watching a trying to figure out what's going on with that picture over there, but, um, anywho, uh, I will have friends come down, like, my, well, my friend was here, she was working in, uh, DC on a movie, she's, she works in film. And her and her two snooty L.A. friends came to D.C. to work on this movie. And the movie uh, went on hiatus for, like, three days. Something happened, and they had to wait. It was, like, a big movie. Like, not one of these small movies, like a big movie. And um, <laughs> uh, my friend Stacy and her friends came up here to hang out. And... Uh, we went out to a bar, and it's just like, uh, whatever. 
And I said to Stace, I said, hey, let, let, you want to go hang out at the park? And she's like, the park? She's like, sure. Because she's thinking, like, New York. Like, oh, let's go sit, you know, at the fucking park where there's people and dogs and everything. Not this. So, and the thing with this park, Druid Hill, it's beautiful. It's a fucking beautiful park. Um, and it's so peaceful. It's such a nice oasis in the middle of the city. But uh, Stacy and her friends were horrified when they got up here. Okay, um, there's a guy on a bike. And I'm really, I'm like going to be murdered. Uh, please just keep going. Okay, you kept going good. I know there's this fucking jackass with their lights on right behind me. But anyway, <laughs> the shadow. <laughs> anyway, we can't, We were up here drinking. Oh god, there's somebody else. They're walking. I'm gonna be shot. Um, we came up here drinking and. It was dark, and she's like, what the fuck, we're gonna be here? And I was like, yeah, and she's like, what the hell are all these people doing walking around in the dark? And I'm like, her friend who was with her was like this obnoxious, like, gay guy. He was so annoying. He was like, girl, what do you think they're doing? They're sucking dicks. And, um, after everyone calmed down, had a few drinks we were laughing our asses off at how scared we were because it was just like you just sit here and you be quiet but see the thing is you it's dark and you're in the woods you can't see anybody come up to your car at, until they're right on top of you and then you're like oh my god so it is it does get the heart a pump in trust me but this place is wild man but I do, I bring people up here, friends. I have friends who, you know, just enjoy coming here to, like, sit here and bullshit at night. Because it's, you can sit in one of the, well, we stay by the gay pavilions now. We, I don't go up to the other pavilion anymore. You'll be having a conversation while some guy across the pavilion is, you know, jerking someone off or something. But whatever, it keeps life colorful. We have the cicadas here in Scottsdale. They are louder, but still a soothing sound when you're sleeping. Oh yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with punching the clown. <laughs> I'm just keeping my eyes peeled for... You never know when someone's going to pop up and scare the living shit out of you. And I'm hungry again. And I don't know. I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what to eat. How am I doing tonight? Um, Mr. J. Quinn, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm just relaxing at the park, hoping, praying that, uh, I, uh, don't get killed. That's the thing, like, if you were here and you could see what was going on, you'd probably get the fuck out of here. But everyone's like, oh, Druid Hill's dangerous. It's not fucking dangerous. There ain't nobody. The, the gay guys are not robbing people. Someone just passed. Like, oh, okay, he's taken off. Bye, car with bright lights. Thanks for sitting here. as peaceful as shit out here. Look 
like I could fall asleep. That's probably what I'll listen to tonight is uh, Country. Country Night. Country Night is a good sleeping uh, thing. I've been listening to Hurricanes. Hurricane Sounds, which is the most chaotic, loud shit you can imagine. But for some reason, I just like it. The wind, the howling wind, and the rain, and the thunder and lightning. It just sounds so good. But Country Night One of my friends, uh, he's older, he's like a boomer, but um, he was like, how do you listen to YouTube when you sleep with all those commercials? And I was like, because I pay for the premium thing. And he's like, oh, I had no idea um, that you could do that. And I was like, yeah, just you just sign up and, and uh, oh God. Why do they have their lights shining right on me? Please turn your lights out. Or I'm gonna get very upset. Talk about like checking somebody out the wrong way. Can can you believe this? Anyway, I just signed my friend up for a fucking YouTube subscription, so he, YouTube premium, so he could uh, enjoy YouTube without the commercials. He's like, oh, it's so great. I turn on the 10 hours of, um, you know, this or whatever, and he, you know, is listening. It's like, yeah, oh, I told you. There must be, there's two people in that car because, oh my god. Fuck. That you cannot see anyone until they're right there. And there's two people in that car shining their damn lights on me. Oh my god. There's another. Oh jeez. See, the. I'm sorry guys, I'm distracted because I don't know what these, this dude over here, I don't know what he's doing, but. And then there's like, just people, like they open their doors up, what the fuck are they doing? And then there's like people walking around over here in the dark. And another guy just crossed my path and I didn't even see him. So was nice and scary. The fucking, th this is the worst part. Is that the sound of crickets um, is making me very tired. These wonderful night sounds and I would be terrified, like I did the other day, fall asleep in the truck at this time. Because at night, I don't know if I'm going to wake up, like, immediately like I did last time. I think I might sleep for a while. Not that there's anything in here to take, but the thought is creepy, isn't it? Possible intruder reported at 1725 Bond Street. That's down in Bell's Point. Um, that's really frightening. Someone just said, can you imagine like you're sleeping and you get woken up by someone just staring at you through the window? Yeah, that would be, that would, um, definitely, um, That would definitely creep me out a little bit. I don't understand. I wish I could see what these people are doing, but I just don't. The 
This park is wild, man. This this kind of shit is what I miss when I go other places. Like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's just there's so many things I'm so familiar with and that I that I grew up here with. Um, and this part, like this park, like we used to come here every year for Pride. They used to have gay pride in this park. And they'd have a stage, and we would see, like, Kier, like, uh, Lady Miss Kier, and we would see, um, uh, Martha Wash, and Robin S, and all these people, and I don't know. It just... You just, I don't know, as you get, like, older, you just start to kind of think more about those good times. It was, like, last week, like, I went out, my friend Dan, who I've been friends with for 30 years, I've known Dan since we were 16, and, um, we decided to go out. We went to this, it was an 80s party at this club, and um, we went, and we had so much fun, and we were dancing, and just, like, I was like, this is, like, back in the day. Like, I miss this. It just feels so different now. It's so weird. I hate being an adult. Like, being an adult sucks. It's much more fun to be a juvenile. A poor juvenile. <laughs> That's one thing I don't miss, is being poor. I don't miss being poor at all, because being poor is really tough. And I, I do believe that everyone should go through at least a five-year period of being poor. Because you learn how to be respectful, you learn how to treat people right, um, you'll never see me shit on servers, uh, housekeepers, all this, uh, never, never, um, you, the, the, but that's the only thing I don't miss, is not having any money, ugh. And, like, if you're going through money problems right now, it will get better, trust me. I thought that it was the end of the world when I didn't have my rent. It was not the end of the world. You all, you, things happen, you always figure them out, and you move forward. That's how you do it. But if a schmuck like me can make it, anybody can make it. You just gotta be... You gotta work hard. Be, in, be your own person, be independent. But I don't miss, uh, I do not miss being poor. And when I say poor, I mean poor, like really poor. My parents fucking talking about money, like we were so poor, I'm like mom and dad, you have no clue what being poor is even about. Like, you did not have to live in apartments with roaches and not being able to afford food. And one of my one of my big things that I hated was having to choose between cigarettes or eating. And those who smoke know what the fuck I'm talking about. Having to choose between buying a pack of smokes or getting food. Um. I always, <laughs> I always seemed like once a week had to, had to sit and think about that decision. Um, but there's also a lot of fun things about being poor that I really liked. that I miss sometimes.
I just don't miss being hungry. And I don't miss eating fucking peanut butter every day. And ramen noodle. You couldn't get me to eat a ramen noodle. Fuck that shit. Ramen noodle or boxed macaroni and cheese. Ugh. I will never forget that time at my ex. This was a long... My first boyfriend. He... We had no food, like, at all. And we had... <laughs> we moved into this apart this apartment we couldn't afford. I don't know why we moved there. And, um... The... There was a... Like, a pantry. And I opened it, and there was, like, food in there. But it was, like, old food. And I was like, well, box macaroni isn't... That's, that's fine, because it's just powder and whatever... And we just mix it with water and it'll be fine. So he cooked it and then put um, salsa in it. Mixed salsa around in this thing. And I was so drunk, I didn't even give a shit. He could have handed me a fucking bowl of diarrhea, I would have eaten it. Um, so I ate this... Uh, <laughs> I ate this fucking... Ugh, I, I don't even know what to call it. it. It was macaroni and salsa, maybe, I guess. Um, I ate that because we didn't, I didn't eat all day. I mean, it was late at night. I hadn't eaten that day. There was no food. So I ate that, and I got so sick. The next day, I had the shits, and I was throwing up, and... Um, just thinking about the macaroni... That it tasted like cardboard. I, I could never eat it again. Out of if it's in a box, I'm not forget it. I mean, if it's like fresh, like you make it like the way you're supposed to, that's different. But that and what what else? Oh, are we gonna go out tonight and have fun? Or are we gonna pay the rent? That was another thing. And I had no. I was like. I did not want it. I, I was like, if I'm going to be poor and miserable, I'm not going to have any responsibilities either. So, I, you know, went to, would go out and be, you know, I remember having the money in my, in my wallet and I'd be like, just spend 40 bucks, that's it. And then you spend 40 and then you spend another 40 and then you spend a hundred. And then the next day you wake up and you're hungover and you're like, what the fuck did I do? And then you have some nasty landlord who's... Who I used to think they were all horrible, but they actually weren't. They just wanted their damn money. <laughs> I'd be the same way. But that's just how things worked back then. When I first moved out, my first apartment was... On, uh, Cathedral Street. It was a one bedroom. It was two hundred and fifty bucks a month, and it had fucking cockroaches. Um, but I didn't care because I was like, "This is my first place." I was so excited to have a place of my own. And then the roaches started to show up, and they were everywhere, and, uh, it was because the neighbor downstairs, she lived in a, her apartment was so fucking disgusting and dirty, and, um, the roaches were all coming from her place, because I didn't even have food in the, I worked at a diner, an all night diner, so I would just eat there. I would never eat at home. Um, I remember, uh, it was, no, it wasn't that apartment. It was the one that I moved into on 23rd Street, I think it was. Um, my friend came over with a bottle of Jack Daniels, and, um, I, I like Jack Daniels over ice, so, um, I like 
took a Ziploc bag, put ice in it, smashed the ice up, and then poured the Jack Daniels into it. And um, <laughs> my friend is drinking out of the bottle, and he set it on the table, and we were talking, and you ever get, like, so drunk, you're, like, leaning into the other person, and you guys are just talking, but you're, like, leaning into each other, like, holding each other up, that was the situation we were in at that stage, and, um, he went and picked up the bottle to take a drink, and a cockroach had crawled up and was sitting on the rim of the bottle, so when he put it in his mouth, <laughs> the cockroach went in his mouth, and he surprisingly did not have that bad of a reaction to it. I would have freaked the fuck out, but he just spit the fucking cockroach out. And he's like, fuck, man, it's a cockroach. And I'm like, you had a cockroach in your mouth. And then he spit the cockroach into the middle of the living room, and the thing just ran off. It just ran off and ran underneath a cabinet or something. So he didn't even kill it. The goddamn thing was in his mouth. Oh my god. Let's see here. Um. Power. Power Chug. Hey Dan. Huge fan here. I currently live here in Arkansas and really enjoyed all the videos you did around here. I'd love to meet you one day. Power Chug, thank you very much. Arkansas, that's a, that's a state for you. Um... I was uh, in Arkansas. I'll never forget this. It was the first time I ever met Colin and Peyton. And they, um, they, we were driving on this fucking country road. And uh, it was late at night. I think they had driven from Austin to come meet me. I think that they were in Austin, Texas, and they came to meet me. They arrived late, and then we went out to the bog. Are they in? Yeah, they are in that Creeps and Monsters. But when we were down, we were going on this country road, and a cop came up behind us and pulled us over for no reason. There was no reason to pull us over, which was the amazing part, because I'm like... The officer said, he just came at the window, he said, can I see your license and registration? I said, what did I do? And he's like, nothing, I just need to see your license and registration. I'm like, oh my god. I said, so basically you pulled me over for nothing. I said, but I'm not going to get an argument with it, I'm just going to give him. And then he started asking me all these questions, like, where are you going? Blah, 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 what are you doing? And I'm like, he was fucking out of a fucking movie. Like, he was like out of like a fucking like like some fucking crazy ass movie oh shit please keep going okay good um like the typical small town backwoods sheriff is what he reminded me of he had us there asking us every goddamn fucking question and um, when we pulled off, I remember Colin and Peyton and I just laughing our asses off because the guy, I mean, it was like out of a fucking movie. Um, I've never experienced something like that before. Just being pulled over because you're driving late at night. I'm trying to explain to him what we're doing. I'm like, I'm a documentary filmmaker. What? I mean, he had no, like, idea or knowledge of what that even meant. But, uh, yeah, we went, uh, we went out that night, had a, had a fun time in the swamp. I, I gotta be honest, I mean, Arkansas creeps me out, man. 
That's a creepy place. Because it's just so, it, it's, I, I don't know about the rest of Arkansas. I mean, I don't know about Little Rock. I think I've been to Little Rock. I can't remember, maybe. I guess that's where all the heathens in Arkansas moved to. But uh, being in the bog, um, that was quite an experience. I've never had an experience like that before. And there was something about that bog down there, man, that just creeped me the fuck out. That place is creepy. I don't care what... I mean, the locals there don't find it creepy. They go out there and shoot guns at night and go hunting and all this other shit. To an outsider who goes there and goes into that swamp at night, that shit is fucking creepy. Oh my god, that's even creepier. Anyway, um, the Arkansas, that bog, yeah, it was a creepy fucking place. The weirdest thing was, um, I always wonder what happened to Jeremy. I think we just lost touch. He, Jeremy, uh, was the producer on those two things. He really helped me so much on those two, uh, Creeps and Monsters. Um... I should send him a text and see how he's doing. Jeremy Walker. I haven't talked to him in so long. Last time I talked to him, he was in co he went to college, I think. But uh, we've pretty much lost touch over the years. Um, that was all the way back in what 2017, maybe. But being out in that bog that one night. Um, I think it was the last night, and I went to the bog alone, because Jeremy had to fly back home, so I took him to the airport, and um, he left, he went back home, and uh, um, I had one night left, or, yeah, I had one night left in, in Texarkana, two nights left. Um, the first night was depressing. It was quiet. I'm trying to find something to do in town, like anything. And you go and meet, like, the people are just so, like, odd. And, and shit closes so early. We were at a bar and it's, like, done at, like, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I said, it's closed already? Yeah, we're closed. And I'm like, Jesus, man. It was a gay club in Texarkana. That's where I went. It was a gay bar or a gay place because a fan in t who was lived outside of Texarkana was like freaking the fuck out that I was in Texarkana and asked me if, if he could take me to the gay club or bar. And I said, oh, absolutely. And um, we met up and went over there, and I was like, God, what a weird place. And I, t I told him, because he was relatively handsome. And he was a good-looking guy, young, you know, um, works out, you know, good-looking guy. And I'm like, who the fuck do you date down here? Like, the guys at the bar were like, they look like Wilford Brimley. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I think you're, you're, um, you're, uh, choices are very fucking limited, I guess, but, um, he's kept in touch, he actually has a boyfriend now, and he moved to, um, he moved to Austin, Texas, so he got out of Texarkana, I can't blame him, oh my god, who the fuck did this, power chug, come on man, don't give me a hundred dollars, um, talking about Arkansas deserves a tip. I love your content, Dan, seriously. I binge your videos like no other. Your production quality is like no other. Power Chug, I am 
Thank you so much. Seriously. Power tug. Because, you know what? Power tug. Do you know how many power tugs I would have had done here at this park to get 100 bucks? Seriously, I was going to end the feed and try to make at least 50. So power tug. Thank you very much. I would have been power chugging cum. <laughs> In the back seat of my truck. <laughs> but, um, Power Chug, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, man. And, um, thanks for, uh, watching my shit. And Texarkana. That bar in Texarkana, that one we went to, I, I just told uh, the guy, I was like, man, this, like, what do you do down here to get laid? Like, I can't even imagine, like, wh like what, what do you do? He's like, you just go to another city. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess. Because I thought Texas, you know, well, I'm used to watching the, those monster films where Texarkana is like this happening city where you know there's big hotels and everything's open and there's trains and everything like that you get there it is nothing nothing like that at all everything is abandoned um everything's abandoned the train station was abandoned um, I think I went into the train station on Christmas Day. I know I was down there on Christmas Day by myself. And that was really quite depressing. I am not having a shitty Christmas this year. I have decided that um, I'm doing it all up this Christmas. I'm not going to have another shitty Christmas. Last year, Christmas was fucking horrible. It was ruined. Um, the year before that, I don't even remember what I did, but it, I probably didn't leave the house because I was not in a good place. Um, oh God, can you believe all the action that is here? Like there are fucking people everywhere. There is one, two, three, four, five, and then five vehicles, and then there's one guy there. One guy there. Oh, those aren't, that's not a guy, that's a deer. There's deer everywhere, too. But, I mean, this is like madness. It's total madness. There's so many people here. They're all brooding. Power Chug, I'm going to carve your name into a tree. It's right. It's right. Oh my god, it's not a deer, it's a person. Okay. I, I swear to god, I thought that was a fucking deer running towards the truck. And it's not a deer, it's a person. And he's, he's, there's something, something wrong with him. He's on something, because he's acting really erratic. I, he's the kind of person I walk up to your window and pull a gun and just start shooting. No. Wow. And then they have guys up here who are like, also like hustling, so like you can pay them. Like I've been accosted a few times by those men. Why are you turning turn your fucking lights out, man? Yeah? Come on, I don't want to be seen here. Thank you. I don't want to be seen in this park. It's so embarrassing. Okay, let's see here. Um, Grice. Hey, Grice. What's up, man? Uh, never... Uh, narrate all the gays you see and describe them as if you're bird watching. Oh, that's a fun idea. I like that, actually. Okay. 
that's what I will do. Now, it's kind of hard because it's dark. You can't see anybody. But I'll try. I see one gentleman kind of lumbering over on the road. And I think he's saying, should I go into the small woods? But he continues on his path. And he is now really looking like he's going to turn into the small woods. But no, he kept his path. He has not left his path. He is still on the road where the lights are, where a lot of people don't go because they don't want to be seen. That's what's crazy about this place. They will do anything not to be noticed or seen. They gotta be in the dark. Why do I keep hearing noises? Where else could I park for a good show for you guys? I mean, people just come here. Like, I, are they doing what I'm doing? Just sitting here enjoying, like, the horror movie atmosphere of, like, ghostly dark figures popping up when you least expect it and they pop up and walk right next to your car to scare the living shit out of you? Or... Are they hoping that what? How do you get dick here? I don't understand. I guess you have to go into the woods over here? Because, I mean, how else would you do it? How would you do it? If everyone's sitting in their car, like, what do you do? Ancient Mysteries. It's a new show. Ancient Mysteries. I could hear Leonard Nimoy. Oh my god, it's so bright. Oh, these lights are so bright. Please keep going. Turn your lights off. Oh my god, you're gonna kill me. Gee, thanks for turning off your high beams at that moment. You saw you were blind me, you dumb motherfucker. Um, where can we go to see some ratchetness? I want to see some real ratchetness. I should just drive down through the fucking woods. That we would see plenty. Let's go take a drive around. This is getting kind of boring. Just to, well, I'm not bored. I just, I'm going to fall asleep. Like... Literally. Okay, this is way too bright. Okay, there we go. Turn this around. And there we are. Let's go drive. Let's go see what we can see. The dick is hopping tonight. No. Oh. Oh. No. no. Jesus. It's my last broadcast. Okay. Alright, we still have... We still have a Benjamin spot and we have 700 people. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. By the way, this is DanBell.com. Need art for your walls? Well, I got you covered. Okay, dude, you're going really fast. You gonna let me turn? Thank you. I know you're in a rush. 
to get thrush, but chill the fuck out. Now. All I smell is weed, and it smells really good. I could totally puff one some... Not... I don't want to puff. I just want to eat an edible. An edible would be very nice. Just like two little gummy bears. Like... To get me going. To get me chill. This park is really pretty. I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's got its seediness, but it is a beautiful park. Um, I can't get over how many deer there are. There's some deer right here on the, on the right. There we go. Oh, he's got antlers, that deer. Now, believe it or not, over here on the left are the, <laughs> the woods where the gay guys go to play in the woods. I, I don't know if there's anybody down there now, but um, this one dude up here, just, like, I'll come here in the daytime sometimes, just sit and relax, and like people come and start talking to you and shit. And uh, this gay dude came over and started talking. He was real nice. And he was telling me about the woods and how he's been going down there for years. And um, what is going on? Like, it's like you have bright lights in my face. Is that like security or something? I think it was security. <laughs> he must be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> it is, it's a security person. It's like a security guard or something. Fuck. Sorry, dude. Meanwhile, it's like 2.15 in the morning. He's like protecting the the um, thing over there for um, the zoo. There, it looks like they're having a, an event there tomorrow. There's like chairs and all kinds of shit set out. So, yeah, but he was telling me about these woods over here and, and how he's been going down there for years. And He said he got a, someone pickpocketed, pick, picked his pocket. I was like, wow. But I liked him. He was funny. someone in the middle of the road singing, so we should probably stop for that, because they're gonna come by, and they're gonna be, we'll see here, I have something, like, on my finger, I don't know if it's a, is that a splinter? Oh, I know what this is. Oh, I remember now. Never mind. You know what this is from? I thought it was a splinter, but I was... I was eating uh, crabs with my family last um, weekend. Um, my mom and sister both had a case of pubic lice. And so we used um, steam on their private parts, and then my dad and I took chopsticks, and I'm just kidding, that didn't happen, um, <laughs> we had steamed crabs, the kind that are in the, in the water, <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> this 
fucking horrible. What a horrible joke that was. It's not even funny. It's disgusting. Um, so anyway, um, we, um, we're eating crabs and I cut my finger on a, on a crab. Like I, I have not cut my finger on a crab claw or whatever in a million years. And then the waiter said something about, if you cut your finger, I can get you a band aid. And like a minute later, I cut my finger. So strange. But I, uh, I want you guys to see more stuff. Let me see if I drive this around. Hold on. Okay. this dude here, he's playing, playing music and walking, listening to music, like, like it's like 1978 and he has a little portable speaker, AM, FM speaker, actually I think they were all just AM back then. Oh, I was like, why are these people? It's because it's, the bars are closed now, so everyone's coming here to. That didn't find a date. They're now hanging out. Park looking for penis. Um, have you ever thought about putting out an album? Um, <laughs> I, no, I have not. I really don't think. Uh, I really don't think it would do well. Actually, it probably would. That's the sad part, but. Um, no, I was thinking because that guy was carrying like a, well, he had his phone to his ear and he's listening to music. And I think of that scene in Freaky Friday, the original Freaky Friday from 1970, is it 76 or 78? Um, I have tried so hard to get the soundtrack to that movie. Um, I just, like, 1976, I don't know why, why won't they release the fucking soundtrack to that movie? There's a scene where she, it's after they, that the mom turns to Annabelle, and then she's like, Annabelle calls, and John Aston answers the phone, and she's like, button up and listen, Bill, and he's like, who are you telling to button up? And since when do you call me Bill? I'm dad to you. <laughs> But anyway, um, she wants him to check on mom, and then he goes in the closet, and she's listening to this ridiculous fucking song with a stereo to her ear, and she's dancing and blowing bubbles, and it's, I don't know why that song, it's like, um, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, it sounds just like that. <laughs> so anyway, so that song, and I love another song in the movie, um, uh, where she's doing the laundry, and it's like, and that song always reminded me of staying home from school. Um, cause I try, I, I tried to stay home from school as much as possible. I hated going to school. So I would do anything to not go. So I would just, you know, be like, I'm sick. I don't feel well. I'm sick. And then, you know, eventually my parents were just like, you're not sick. But I actually really was. I was having anxiety. 
I had horrible, horrible anxiety about going to school. But back when I was a kid, you, you know, that was like something that uh, was just not um, a thing. Nobody even thought about children having anxiety or GAD. But I, uh, I did. I had anxiety. Uh, I, I remember my first panic attack. The first time I ever had a panic attack. I was six years old at my grandmother's house. I'll never forget that. I thought I was going to die. I literally thought I was going to die. We were watching um, the film uh, The Doll Maker. It was on television. And uh, uh, Jane Fonda was the star of the film. It's on YouTube if you want to find I'm not. I watched the scene that freaked me out and made me have a panic attack when I was a young kid, but um, it didn't make me have a panic attack again. It was just like, I freaked out over this. But when I was a kid, there was a scene where the doll maker, Jane Fonda, her daughter disappears. And they live next to a train yard. And the daughter decides to take her doll and go through the fence into the train yard. And the stupid bitch goes and sits underneath of a train on the rail as you do you know so Jane Fonda is frantically looking for her and realizes oh my god she's in the train yard and they start running and she's screaming her name and they keep cutting back and forth between that and the train starting up and starting to move and Jane Fonda running to get and it for some reason it just sent me into a major panic attack and um the train goes over the fucking daughter's legs and I mean now I watched it and I'm like serves her right you stupid little fucking slow ass retard <laughs> stupid bitch but back then it was absolutely terrifying and um I mean, who sits on train tracks, by the way, with the train under the train, like in an active train yard? You really have to be some some level of intelligence. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, uh, that was my first panic attack. I couldn't catch my breath, and my grandmother had these horrible plastic cups that were washable. You could reuse them. She had them for years. We always drank out of them. And they smelled. They had this weird smell to them. She didn't have a dishwasher. So she washed everything by hand. And I'll never forget the smell of those glasses. And, and putting water in the glass. Because I thought. I, I was trying to drink water. And I was just like. I don't know what's wrong with me. And I remember my hands started to clench up. Everything that would happen when you have a panic attack. Um, and I was six, man. I don't know how many... Do, do a lot of six-year-olds have panic attacks? Like, out of all the, the times of memory from being five, six years old, there's only a few memories that I have. And that is probably one of the strongest ones that I have was the first panic attack, which I, which, you know, I talked about in therapy and everything else. And, uh oh, someone's car won't start. They're going to be one unhappy motherfucker when they have to call their wife. Be like, honey, um, I broke down in a park. Can you come get me? What do you mean you're in a park? Bring the fucking jumper cables down here, you stupid cunt. Don't question me. Yes, sir, I'll be right there.
So anyway, um, oh, Apocalypse Gen, people are still here. It's unbelievable. It is people. It's two thirty. It's two thirty. I'm giving you two fucking live streams in one night. I'm only going to stay until 3, and then I'm really going to get off here because this is absurd. I got to take Mama out. And plus, when I turn this off, I have to spend at least 20 minutes finding dick. I'm going to be out here with my pants down. Searching for some a stud to impregnate me. I want my park baby. What's your baby's name? Oh, Druid. His name is Druid. Druid smells very uh, strange. That's because he's a piece of shit. You say I can't actually have a baby. I just pooped out a semen cake turd and I named it Druid. Would you like to hold him? He loves little kisses. One is, what are all these spots? Oh, that's corn. He has little corn kernels sticking to him. <laughs> I don't know who the father is. <laughs> Boy, y'all, y'all didn't know you were going to get this kind of show. This is the X-rated Dan Bell. It only happens after 2 a.m. This is Dan Bell late night. Late night Dan Bell. That's what I should do on, on um, Patreon. I start doing a late night stream where I just tell the most disgusting fucking jokes I can come up with. Because when I get on a roll, dude, I can get on a roll. But having a sweet turd baby named Druid... This is what we're here for. See, AJ Vintage? Exactly. You're here for the show-stopping um, content that uh, will have me demonetized and thrown off the internet. <laughs> I should say show-stopping. It's just a career-stopping content. Um, here is a couple of boys, and they look like they're... Um, They look like they're... Uh, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't understand coming here with friends. Like, you know... I tell, you guys want to hear it. Of course you're going to want to hear it, so I'll just tell the fucking story. Um, so, like, my friend is, like, really... Um, how should I say, free, he's very free, like, he, and, of course he is, he's gorgeous, has a beautiful body, a giant penis, he does not mind being naked around anyone, he is, uh, he, lo he prefers being nude, he's a nudist, kind of, like, he doesn't go to nudist colonies or anything, but he likes being naked, but anyway, he and this guy hooked up, they got together, and then they moved, he moved out to Denver, He's back here now, thank God, but, um, when he was living in Denver, I went out to, I was there, and I wanted to see him, and we were hanging out and stuff, and one night, we were out at this bar, and we were drinking, and he's like, he's like, hey man, let's, there's, it was snowing like crazy, and he's like, let's go to the, um, bathhouse afterwards, and I was like, bathhouse, I was like, I don't need a bath, I was like, you need a bath, and he's like, no, 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 man, you, he's like, it's fun, and he's like, they have a swimming pool and we can go swimming, and I'm like, oh, I didn't realize it was like that, so I'd never been to a bathhouse before, I've never experienced something like that, um, and, uh, we went, and, uh, <laughs> okay, so you go in, you pay, it was, I think it was like 30 bucks, and, you get a room. No, it was more than 30. It was like, 
maybe that was half because we we bought a room together. He's like, there's a you can get a little room like a private room, and I was like, oh, and sure enough, we went in, and the place is dark. It's it's like really dark, and I hear somebody yelling. Oh, probably in ecstasy. Anyway, so, um, um, it's really dark. We go, we walk down, they give you a key, and you wear the key around your arm. Like, it's like, it's, it has that little, like, plastic thing around it that keeps it on your arm or whatever. So we go down to the room, and, uh, Brandon takes his clothes off. He doesn't even use a towel. He's just walking around naked. And uh, I was like, this is so weird. Because I realized, I was like, I've never been naked in front of Brandon. And I'm like, I'd rather be here by myself, honestly. Because I don't want Brandon to see me naked. I just thought it was so weird. Um, so, like, when you're friends, like, can you imagine coming here, coming here with a friend? You're like, oh, hold on, I just found some guy in the bushes. I'm going to suck his dick. Like, hold on for me. It was very strange. But anyway, so uh, at the bathhouse, I ended up uh, getting nude, and I put a towel around me. And Brandon and I walked, and Brandon is beautiful. I mean, he is just, like, a dreamboat. Um... And, uh, I'm glad we never dated or anything. We did fool around a couple of times, but we always kept it this way because I don't think we'd make a good couple. But he's this beautiful, gorgeous, black, beautiful guy. I mean, he's stunning. But he's walking around and guys are just, you know, like, looking at him and stuff. And then we went to the pool... And we're swimming, and it was lovely, because it's, like, snow falling, and it's just beautiful out, and it seems like we were outside. Were we outside or inside? I can't remember. Maybe we went to a hot tub outside, and then inside there was a pool. It was a giant pool. I don't know. I can't remember, um... But we were like swimming, drunk, and it's like one thirty in the morning, and we brought booze with us, and we were there all night. We had so much fun. I mean, it was like a blast. Like it was so much fucking fun. Um, the ratchetness that occurred in that place was like un off the charts. I've never seen, like, the stuff that I saw in that place. And it was just, cr it was insane. I'm like, don't people, they, they did HIV testing, right? When you walk in, they had a little room with a guy in there. You could just go in and get an HIV test. And he would give you, uh, condoms and, uh, uh, lube for free. And, um, then they had a, a day or something that you could go and get. You could go and get prep. You could get tested, or like they would take your blood there, and then you could get prep. Get on prep, because everyone's on prep now. Nobody uses fucking condoms anymore, which is insane. But nobody does. Everyone's on fucking prep. But it's none of my business. I don't care. Um, power Chug again, hey man. Interrupting your story time to say good night. Dan, we love you. Keep up the good work, brother. Thank you so much, Power Chug. Sorry to share these revolting stories. I'm sure you don't hear this a lot down in Arkansas, but I'm just sharing some stories from my past, that's all. From my illustrious past. But good night, Power Chug. Thank you. Love you, too. Um, when I was growing up, 
my parents were very strict. And they always uh, tried to protect us from seeing things that we shouldn't see. R-rated movies, for example. I mean, my mother was just up in the air about this R-rated movie thing. When I was young, young, real young, like, probably, I don't know, I was like 10. I think 10 is when I started to really think about film and stuff. My dad, um, and my cousin and uncle and some other people were over at my aunt's house and they had rented this film called Street Trash that was uh, from 1987 it was I, well it was brand new at the time because 87 I was 10 um, they rented this film called Street Trash and we were absolutely forbidden to go downstairs into the basement where they were watching this film and all you could hear was them screaming and laughing and carrying on and I'm like what is what are they watching like it drove me mad that I could not watch this movie and then I became obsessed and uh, I remember I went to school and started going through microfiche and looking up street trash and uh I found all these articles on the film, reviews, interviews, uh, pictures of the premiere, all this stuff, and I started keeping a binder of photocopies of these microfiche, um, and if you don't know what microfiche is, <laughs> um, it's like a, I don't even feel like explaining it, just look it up, um, because nowadays it's completely absolute. Uh, uh, obsolete. You would just go on to Google and find what you need to find in two seconds. Um, this was like early Google and it was fucking uh, manual. So you didn't, there was no computer. There was only, you looked at an, it was like a number and a letter to find what you were looking for. It was very strange. I started to collect. articles about movies um, I saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre it came on WBFF no 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 it wasn't WBFF it was Channel 54 I can't remember what that what their, their call numbers were but uh, Channel 54 in Baltimore used to show schlock films and stuff on the weekends and I really started to get into watching these films so I watched uh, the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which basically when I saw that, that's when I wanted, I said, I want to make movies. It's when I saw Texas Chainsaw. I think that was the point where um, there's a shot in Texas Chainsaw Massacre that uh, I remember it was the first time I ever saw a film and it was a shot that gave me chills because I thought it was so perfect. And it's the shot where Pam and Kirk go to the house. And Kirk goes inside and Leatherface kills him. And Pam is seated on a bench, a swinging bench. And she yells for Kirk and she stands up and starts walking towards the house. And what they did in that scene was they put the, the, the rails for the... Uh, for the camera dolly underneath the the bench and it's pointed up so it's just following her walking up to the house from under the it goes under the bench and up um up to the house and uh it's just that one shot and when I saw that I just said that's I want to make movies like, that's what I want to do. I want to make movies. And, um, I haven't gotten to the movie part yet. Well, I have made two films, but, I mean, they're not, you know, they're no cinema. Um, some people love them. I'm still trying to figure out how to re-release them now because 
Vimeo it died on me. Uh, so I don't know where to release them. Because I, I think Patreon probably won't allow me to have them on Patreon. But I don't know. But anyway, um, I'll figure something out. Maybe I just release them on Xtube or something. Like a porn website. And then... Mm, I don't know. Just a thought. Anyway, so... Um, I saw... It's when I saw... When I was 12 years old. And um, my teacher asked us... Um, what would we like to watch for Halloween? And the kids were like, oh, The Worst Witch. The, everybody wanted to watch The Worst Witch with the fucking Tim Curry. And it was like a TV movie with Charlotte Ray and Tim Curry. Um, and that other amazing actress who was in a bunch of B-movies. I can't remember her name. Um, not not Faruza Balk, but the other lady. But, uh... For some reason, uh... I read something about Rosemary's Baby. And, um... I went to the video store with my grandmother. And my grandmother just let me rent whatever I wanted. So I saw Rosemary's Baby. So I rented Rosemary's Baby. And, um... I must have watched it five times while we had the tape. I was obsessed with Rosemary. I still am obsessed with Rosemary's Baby. It's one of the greatest films ever made as far as I'm concerned. Um, you, you don't get much better than Rosemary's Baby. It is... Uh, true. Here's another two guys together. I do it so strange. What are they a couple? He's like, come on, let's... It's so weird. Anyway, I watched Rosemary's Baby like five times, and I, I was completely obsessed with it, and uh, started reading about it, and got old cinema books, was reading about it, and those, and the techniques, and uh, just completely fucking obsessed with that movie. And, um, still am, and I still tell people, if you want to be a filmmaker, watch Rear Window, Rosemary's Baby, and The Blair Witch Project. And the reason that I say The Blair Witch Project... It, the Blair Witch Project, the reason that people have problems with it today is because they're not watching it the right way. Blair Witch Project works when it's in Dolby Sound. So you can hear the Dolby surround. You can hear the noises and the the knocks and the giggles and everything else clearly while you're watching the movie. The whole reason that movie was so terrifying was because of the sound. The sound, and it's such a genius idea what they did. But they were playing like moose noises and all this stuff and you you picture in your mind, oh my god, this witch. You never see the witch. But you picture her, what she could look like. And I was so... When I first saw Blair Witch, I saw it when it came out in the theater. And I was so moved and impressed by the... I, I just said the sound. It was just such an exciting film at the time. Because nothing had ever been done like that before the found footage thing. It, I mean, it, it kind of happened in, uh, what is it called? Cannibal Holocaust, which is a Italian horror movie they shot in the Philippines. But it was supposed to be like a documentary crew went into the woods and then their footage was found. But this was in the 70s. But Blair Witch was totally, uh, kind of just visceral and, um, but the sound is what made the picture. If you notice, a lot of my video, all my videos, uh, is they're very reliant on sound, and it's to create um, an atmosphere. 
um, of dread or, you know, being scared or darkness or whatever. Um, it's all to build this atmosphere. And, um, I, I learned that from, from, uh, Blair Witch. Just sound. And another film that has beautiful sound, and it, it just makes the movie so good, is Alien. Alien has a wonderful collection of sound effects and music um, that just create this other world that uh, is terrifying. The, the low hums and the, the, you know, just all the stuff they put in there and it, it's just it works so beautifully to make the picture what it is but I um, films I weren't impressed with when I was younger the Friday the 13th films I thought were absolutely horrible I don't know how anyone could like those movies I know a lot of horror fanatics are like in love with Friday the 13th and they like going to conventions and meeting like the, whole, the like cheerleader from Friday the 13th part 5 or 6 or 8 or whatever um, I thought those movies were absolutely dreadful I mean they're just, I can't even watch them today they're so fucking stupid and annoying um, but there are people who are like really into those films and uh, I just don't understand I, I, and, I, and I'm always right Whenever people are into those films and they make a, their own movie, their movie sucks because they watch Friday the 13th. I'm like, don't watch Friday the fucking 13th. You need to watch Rosemary's Baby, Rear Window, and Blair Witch Project. And you need to pick the best things out of those films. There are so many wonderful things in each of those films that is just amazing. That is just... Can make any picture a good picture. But, like, Rear Window... Fuck, man. That is a great movie. Rear fucking Window is... You can't get much better than that. That's, like, a masterful, perfect film. Um, the tension that it gives... The, the scene... And I remember when I was... Uh, I was probably 12 when I saw Rear Window. And the scene where... Uh, James Stewart and Thelma Ritter are watching Grace Kelly go into Raymond Burr's apartment. She's climbing around. She goes through the window. And then Burr comes home and she's in the apartment. And he starts to attack her. The fucking tension in that scene. You cannot even... You, you, you want to you wanna climb up the walls. That's the most amazing like thing I've ever experienced seeing a movie like that I mean that scene it just absolutely devastates the audience because you want to do something there's nothing they could do they have to sit and watch this man who murdered his wife attack the sweet innocent Grace Kelly in her, in her beautiful designer dresses and um I mean, all of Hitchcock's stuff is brilliant, but that movie in particular is one of my absolute favorite. I mean, I there's nothing bad about that movie. It's like, from beginning to end, it's a fantastic, perfect, perfectly executed movie with the beautiful set. That set is something to I mean, it's amazing that at that time in the 50s that they built that set to film the movie it's one set it's like unbelievable um and I love the scene where she brings dinner to him the guy from the restaurant brings dinner and good evening Mr. Jeffries like I just I have all that shit I love that shit the cocktails and lobster dinners uh in a little apartment. Oh my god, I love that movie. It's it's just it, nothing could be better than that. 
Psycho, I like Psycho. However, I feel like the film was good up until Janet Lee is murdered. And then it kind of goes downhill for me. Then I don't really like it as much because I already know who killed her. Um, I, I just, for some reason, that always got in the way. I love the beginning of the film, though. When she's having, um, uh, oh, eat, Eating Raul, I've seen a million times. Love that film. I, I uh, um, met, uh, Mary Warren of, uh, years ago, like 10 or 15 years ago, at a party in New York, um, and she was absolutely lovely and drunk. She was a lot of fun. She's a really, really amazing artist. If you have not seen her work, she is a wonderful painter. She's very good. Um, but anyway, we started talking about eating Raul, and uh, she just was saying, like, oh, how difficult it was, and how they had no time, and, but her and, uh, uh, what, Paul Bartel were fucking fabulous together, that was a wonderful movie, just so, so much fun, I'd really, I haven't seen that in a long time, I'd really like to sit down and watch it again. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? Brilliant. Josh, watch Repulsion with headphones. Yep. I wish everybody would watch films with headphones. I Honestly, I really do. The speakers they have... They, they have these amazing... Um, you know, ways of you have somebody come in and do your speakers uh, you still won't get the same experience at home as if you were to wear headphones specifically look up Dolby approved headphones if you get a pair of Dolby approved headphones you're really going to do good but they're expensive but they're worth every penny because you get to hear the film I'm not talking about these trashy like you know Bose wireless, I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about real good headphones um, I have like three pairs of really good headphones and um, sometimes I will, when I watch a movie I'll, I'll watch it in the living room but I'll put the headphones on and listen to it through the headphones and um, I love that I love being able to really hear a movie I can't watch scary movies in bed with headphones. Freaks me out too much. And I don't like... Like movies with jump scares. Which is like every horror movie now. The horror movies today are horrible. I don't, I'm sorry, but... Like people are like, Oh, James Wan, he's the master of horror. No, he's not. James Wan is the master of jump scares. He is not the master of horror. Let's... Let's... Calm down, okay? The guy... Is the master of jump scares. Those films are not scary to me. They're stupid. And I... Um, I just find them just... I don't know. I just find them... Bo they're boring. I mean, the people that they... the the, the That couple, the Warrens... Um, we're such con artists. I mean, all this shit. There. And then they try to say based on a true story. You're talking about a fucking movie with a raggedy end doll that kills people. Or that, uh, not a, well, in the movie, it's actually this ugly blue doll. But the real, <laughs> the real doll is a raggedy end doll from the 70s that they said was possessed. I said based on a true story. I'm like, hey, get the fuck out of here. How come we don't have possessed baby dolls today? You know, how come possessed baby dolls don't make the news today? You know what I mean? Like somebody says, oh, I have a possessed baby doll. Never gets on the news.
Did I like Reanimator? Absolutely. Love Reanimator. Great film. Um, Basket Case, too. I love Basket Case. All those old horror movies, man, are just... It's the B horror movies. Now, I love Herschel Gordon Lewis. So, I, I do like Schlock. I just don't like the Friday the 13th movies, because they're mean. Friday the 13th is no fun. They would be better off as comedies. They should, they should have done a Friday the 13th comedy. Because it would have been great. Or just turn the whole series into comedy. It's not... They're, they're not scary. Jason, the character, is not scary to me. It's just... It's a disgusting dude wearing a hockey mask. Like, his mother was more scary than he was. In part one, when she... Goes there for that dreadful actress that I met. What was her name? Uh, the woman in part one that we met. I think her name was... Oh, her name is Adrienne Curry. She's an actress. I don't I think she's from Canada. No, not Adrienne Curry. Adrienne King. Her name is Adrienne King. She's an actress from Canada. And I was hired to consult on a low-budget horror movie that she was in. <laughs> And she could not read lines worth... I mean, she can read. She's not stupid, but she can't act. She's a horrible actress. And, of course, the guy who directed it... Who directed... Is wearing a Jason t-shirt and shit. I'm like, dude... Like, can you stop going to cons and hiring your cast at cons? Like, going up, Hey, I'm, do I'm working on this film. I really want you to be in it. It's like, oh my god. Why would you pay to have her in a movie? Like, pay extra... Like, that's not a name. That's one pitfall that all these idiots who make movies make. Uh, let me tell you, if you're going to make a movie, don't you don't need to worry about a star. Okay? Find the star in your city. You don't need to hire um, the some random woman from a movie that is from 50 years ago. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, Adrian King... She was lovely, but she couldn't act. She's a terrible actress. And the guy's like, yeah, man, she was in part one and part two. And I'm like... So I watched the, the part... I'd never seen part two of Friday the 13th, right? There's this fucking scene. She's in the beginning of the film. She's in the film for like ten minutes. And she is... It's ten minutes of her walking around a house, a set, uh, taking a shower, putting on a, a, a robe, the phone rings, she, she walks into the living room, She, wa I mean, she's walking all over this house, and then all of a sudden finds Jason's mother's head in her refrigerator, and then Jason pops up behind her, and stabs her in the head. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Um, I, I've never, I was just so embarrassing. I mean, I was like, what an embarrassing role, like, but she's made, do you know how much those people make? Like, she, first of all, she is like, now, don't get me wrong, this woman was lovely. She was so sweet, so nice, not a mean bone in her body. She was a lovely woman. She just can't act. Um, and I would never recommend anyone hire anyone from any of the Friday the 13th film franchise to appear in your work. If you only have a $50,000 budget, don't blow 15 of it on some person no one's ever heard of before. You'll be sorely... Uh-oh. What's going on back here? I see a fat guy who's fat. Looks like me. Except he's black. And then, what's going on with that? Is that a girl? Looks like a fucking chick. No, it's just a gay guy who's like real flamboyant. 
with little shorts on and blonde hair. Anyway, so, um, yeah, just don't waste your 15 grand. I got hired as a consultant on a few, especially since YouTube, I, and I don't promote these films because there's not many that I have consulted on that were that good. And I've never executive produced except for Jake on Close for Storm. That was the only executive producer I did because I'm always asked to be executive producer, but, like, I have a fee, you know what I mean? Like, if you can't meet my fee, I'm not going to do your project. I'm sorry, I work for a living. Everybody wants to get shit for free. I just can't do it. Oh. Carnival of the Souls is fantastic. Beautiful film. So good. Do I like Twin Peaks? Yeah, I do. I, I honestly, um, I don't have a lot of patience. So I did watch all of season three on Showtime. And I thought it was brilliant. It was a little slow. It was definitely a little slow. So it was uh, a little bit irritating and annoying that it was going so slow. But, um... David Lynch in general. I think David Lynch's best movie that he ever did was uh, Straight Story with Richard Farnsworth. It could be a toss-up of that and Elephant Man, but those two films are probably his best. But I love Wild at Heart and Mulholland Drive and uh, Inland Empire, uh, Lost Highway, I mean, just amazing films. He, I love David Lynch. Obsessed with David Lynch. I have a piece of his artwork that I purchased in New York a long time ago. Inland Empire is fucking amazing. I love that movie. I saw it in the theater when it came out, and I was like, wow, David Lynch is gone video. Um, you know, it's amazing. It, it, it's the, the weird thing now that gets me is that I'm going to wait 20 more minutes because I can go over and get something to eat and then go over and walk mama. The thing that gets me, um, about a lot of people haven't seen my two feature films that I did. Well, there's Margie and Scott, but I don't consider that, like, that's a documentary. I'm talking about, like, film, like, plotish kind of things. So I have these two films. I did one in, I did one in 2000 called Go Go Motel, and then I did another one in 2003 called Night 50. And at that time, in 2000, uh, a camera that shot in 720p um, was extremely expensive. I think we're talking um, $100,000 maybe uh, for a camera that would shoot at that resolution at that time in 2000. Um, I didn't have any money. We didn't have money to make this fucking Gogo Motel movie. But I wanted to make a movie, so I just cast all my friends. And um, I bought a Sony Handycam and shot this movie. And I had a vision for it when I made it. I, I wanted it to look like a cheesy drive-in movie, but um, to have it be like scary, like really creepy. 
And unfortunately, the vision that I had in my head was not possible back then. It just wasn't, especially even if we had shot it with a great camera and had a cinematographer, I don't think I would have been able to do the things I wanted to do to it that today, when I remastered it last year, it was really the last time those tape, those original tapes were fucked. I mean, they were so old. And um, one of them had broken off during a scene and we had, I had to go and take the tape apart. My friend came over and took it apart. And we taped the tape back together and put it back into the player. And luckily where it broke, it didn't, it didn't break during a scene that we had to use. So we were lucky, but, um, I remastered them and, uh, we released it today. And because video, the video look is like a thing now. I mean, people pay for apps to make their fucking perfect video look like shit video. Um, people liked it. They think it's like cool back in 2000, the film ruined my reputation. I, I was 23. I was just coming on the scene. I really, really would. There was, at that time, there was a lot of film production going on in Baltimore. And, um, I'd been hired on a couple things. And then, uh, the right people saw Gogo Motel and word got around and I never got hired again on a movie. Never got hired on anything. I, I worked on a couple things, but not like I should have. I should have had a real career at that point. I should have been on the union and had a career, and I, I didn't get it. Um, because Gogo Motel was looked at as a joke. It was I edited the fucking thing with two VCRs and a, and a piece of shit device that laid music over the tape, and that's how I put it together. And it was shit. It was total shit. You see it today, it's a totally different um, thing because I was able to take the footage and digitize it and blow it up and work with it and make it, uh, you know, I was able to get rid of the fisheye effect. I was able, I mean, the, the fucking thing, we had a fisheye lens, not a fisheye lens, it was supposed to be wide angle, but it ended up looking very fisheye. You could see the corners and stuff. So I just stretched it out and made it, you know, put it out to where it's supposed to be. Um, man, that movie was some, that was some job, man. So it's weird watching it 23 years later. Um, you know, I, I spent like two or three weeks uh, editing, recutting it, and then we spent, like, another week doing the remaster process of sound and picture. And, um, I sent it to one of the castmates. I, usually people in the cast are on my Facebook page. And this guy I haven't spoken to in a long, long time. And I sent him that, the link to see it. I didn't know if he would watch it. And he contacted me and said, Dan, I can't believe I'm seeing this movie. He's like, he's like, it's been like 20 years, dude. And he's like, I, can't, I never thought I would see this again. And I was like, well, it's back. It's like a, it's like herpes. It's back. But, um, yeah, it's just funny how that works. Like, what happened years ago like if you shot a movie on video you were considered like an amateur nobody now if you shot on video you're a genius you know it's amazing it's genius he shot it on video I remember when I shot the the Dead Mall series on video which was really ahead of its time, because no one at that point had been using video cameras for anything, um, and I shot that episode in Toys R Us in, uh, the smallest mall in the world, and another place too, another mall, because I was going around with that old panty video camera, full-size 
VHS camera. So I did that, and then, like, everyone started to fucking use... Not everyone, but people started to film with video cameras, and... I don't know. Then again, the Polaroids. Like I said, when I was, you know, taking Polaroids, people were like, oh, I've got to do Polaroids now. The mall Polaroids, like, everyone started taking mall Polaroids. I'm so not into taking Polaroids right now. I just don't feel like it. I've been having trouble, like, thinking about, like, oh, what should I do Polaroid-wise? I just can't come up with anything. Anyway, guys, I really have to go. I am so tired, and I'm gonna drive over to the little store and see if I can grab something to eat because I am hungry but uh, this has been fun I want to thank everyone for being here if you stayed here the whole time that's amazing because I've been on for six over six hours now six fucking hours I've been on here um, you'll have a wonderful night and I will see you and hopefully I'll see you on Patreon if not this is danbell.com. If not, I'll see you on another live stream. Have a good night.